full commentary on the radio on FM, DAB and on BBC Sounds today as well in the UK for Jills Against Blackpool. Online commentary via the BBC Sport website and app of Solihull Moors against Maidstone, Tunbridge against Harbour. Three Kent FA Cup ties must be decided today in the first round. About to get underway here at Priestfield. Reports from the other two games with our non-league sides. Your commentary team here though, Peter Lloyd and firstly Ben Watts. Yeah, and first observation, Peter Lloyd, is that Jules do appear to be going with a back three again. Jaden Clark very much looks like he's lining up as a wing back. And then it's Jack Nolan almost playing as a, another forward alongside Jacob Wakeley. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, Jaden Clark is very much the shape that we played last week, um, with uh, Ogie being brought into a, one of those three centre-back positions. Um, so, uh, it'd be interesting to see whether Blackpool feel they can get some overloads in the wide areas, maybe. Um, but uh, certainly, Jules, we, we need the wing backs on the front foot. Bit of a collision That's there between Ogie and Jordan Gabriel in the early stages. More of a, a 4 4 2 for Blackpool, but Gabriel will get forward down that right hand side and he wins this early free kick. So, Jules with Glenn Morris back in goal, Romeo Hutton, Connor Marston, Max, Ima Shadogi, and then Jaden Clark is the more defensive options as the switch of play from the free kick goes out of play. So, three man, def three man midfield, sorry, which is currently Ewan Williams is the most central, Armani Little left, Tim Dieng right, and then Nolan is going to play off uh, Jacob Wakeling in attack. It'd be interesting to see whether that sort of morphs into a kind of diamond in midfield on occasion, particularly when Jules are out of possession. Um, but I think equally, with Dien going wide, it'd be interesting to see how often we perhaps, in, in, when, say, Glenn Moss has got the ball in his hands, how much he'll kick towards Dieng to try and win a first header. Jules in possession. I'll run you through the Blackpool team in a moment as Ogie's clearance flicks off Joseph. And out of play for a, a throw-in in these early stages between the side 16th in League One, Jules dropping to 11th in League Two of late with their form. No, the side won a game last month. So hoping to... Well, somebody's going to have to win this afternoon, that, that's for sure, as Marston goes back to Morris, back between the sticks, the veteran goalkeeper. And down the middle looking for Wakeling, who's tussling with a fire. Jack Nolan can't get the Tim Dieng nod down header. Some quite young players in this Blackpool team. A fire one of them, 22-year-old on loan from Brighton, playing at the heart of defence, along with Ollie Casey. And there's a clearance from the goalkeeper, Richard O'Donnell, which is met by Ewan Williams. Jaden Clark misjudges the bounce of the ball in centre field, and Blackpool look to come over the halfway line in this third minute. Ball knocked long towards the edge of the Jill's box. Should be dealt with here by Hutton. Could have let it go out of play for a throw, but instead decides to control. And uses Ewan Williams in that deep base in midfield, Ewan Williams. Today, with Armani Little just pressed a little bit higher up the pitch as Jules knock it forward, away by Coulson, the left back. For Blackpool, Gabriel the right back. 4-4-2 four, four, for them, with Evans and Finnegan playing centrally. Embleton and... Carey playing wide and then Joseph and Ballard and then the 20 international alone from Southampton the front two and the experienced Evans dropping into midfield and knocking this long Gabriel getting really far forward in fact sometimes going beyond the right midfielder as Tim Dieng now scuffs an attempted clearance Jaden Clark playing very deep on the left side of the moment wins Jules a throw so in the fourth minute and goal very early goal for Bromley at Rochdale Corey Whiteley uh, with uh, the first minute goal there if they get make the second round Bromley it will be the first time in 79 years for the Ravens very early goal indeed and of course Blackpool 1-2-0 at Hayes Lane in this competition last year another trip to Kent for them as uh, Wakeling puts a fire under pressure. O'Donnell, well, his clearance almost was collected by Nolan. There was some chat in the, uh, the media box away to our left. Our colleagues talking about who might play in goal today, whether it was going to be the more experienced O'Donnell or if it was going to be Harry Tyra, the young Everton loney. But here's Marston picking the ball up. It's been pinched in central midfield by Finnegan. And now driving forward is Sonny Carey, trying to slot this in towards Joseph, good work by Glenn Morris who's come right to the edge of his penalty area to gather and Ogie, good bit of physicality from him as well Peter to deny the forward going through Yeah, looks to try and play in the space in behind All played forward by Hutton looking for that quite direct pass in behind for Wakeling, cut out by Blackpool 
But Jules is going a little bit more direct in attack. Wakeling looks to try and pinch it. Armani Little puts a foot in. Jules have it here with Wakeling. It's a poor pass, though, well behind Jaden Clark after a good work initially off the ball. Yeah, just wanted Armani Little took a bit of a whack there, which uh, is a very influential player and obviously has, has been out of the team recently, which we missed him terribly. Let's hope that's uh, just so he can run off. Yeah, it just looks like he's trying to hobble and run it off. And as Hutton receives the ball on this right-hand side, this formation does, of course, allow him to get a little bit higher on the pitch. That's a nice combination play from Nolan to Ewan Williams and plays it out left to Jaden Clark, who at the minute looks a little bit awkward in that left wing back position and a real scuffed pass forward gives away possession yeah that was, that was disappointing actually that was the really good um, ball retention from Jules oh, the goalkeeper really doesn't want it to be receiving a back pass there under pressure from Wakeling almost on his own goal line he took a touch and then knocked it to his right to a fire it was an awkward bouncing one as well and uh, already a couple of times he's given away possession from clearances out so Perhaps an area for Jules to continue to put pressure on him. Yeah, good to see that uh, Jules have, have gone with a, a pretty strong team. You know, sometimes at this stage of the competition, sides can, can put out a sort of worse than EFL trophy type side. Um, you know, we're taking it seriously. We want, we want to get a result and get positivity again back in the club. A little flick on by Dieng. Nolan wins a throw in on this near side, the right. Bromley aren't messing around. Two goals in three minutes at Rochdale. Michael Cheek has got the second one. Rochdale nil, Bromley two. Of course, these days, that would not be an upset if they were to beat Rochdale. Poor play forward. But it says a lot about um, how far Bromley have come. You said it's 79 years since they made round two. Yeah, historically speaking, I guess Rochdale will be the football league team, but not so anymore. Nolan gets the pass off Ewan Williams can't quite turn away from his man interesting to see him just play and deploy that little bit more centrally off the centre forward this afternoon he hasn't perhaps found his form of last season with Atkinson Stanley playing in the wider area for Jules and at times has been left out of the side in favour of the likes of Clark and Bode yeah I'm not sure he can have too many complaints on occasions of being out of the team I think he's uh, came here you know, with a tremendous reputation from last season about what he achieved at this level um, and uh, let's just hope that we can find the right niche for him. Carey, good interception from Ewan Williams. Ball played four by Finnegan. A couple of the younger players pinging it around for Blackpool, and then Sonny Carey goes to ground very easily, but is given a free kick by the referee. Connor Marston is making that point to Carl Brook, as are most of the patrons in the rain event. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, it's a difficult one for the referee. I think he's just knocked the ball past him and gone down and asked the question. Um, you know, if Marston's not there, he can he can run into the space in behind him. Um, you know, and, and carry on possession. So, ref probably does it does look very soft. He's he's at the very least felt the contact, shall we say, and gone down very comfortably. But I'm not sure what else the ref can do there. You don't get free kicks for that in League Two. Let's, let's put it like that. Here comes a free kick then for Blackpool. A number of players on the edge of the six-yard box, fizzed in low towards the near post and cleared away by Jaden Clark. Now to play for a throw-in on this. I, I guess that, that's, a, that's a really good free kick if someone gets across the front post and flicks it in. Um, but uh, that's what you have your man for the front post area and dealt with comfortably. Corkson, the former Middlesbrough fullback, wins another throw-in off Romeo Hutton. High up the left-hand side for the visiting Seasiders. Most recent contest between the two as uh, they come forward again down the left hand side. Ball played in towards the penalty area, flicks off Hutton and out of play for a corner. Of course, a couple of humdinging ties really in, in league football between these two in, in recent times. Obviously, the last back in September of 2020 on this ground where Dominic Samuel scored twice for the Jills in a 2 0 victory, but perhaps most memorably was the one a couple of years before when. Oh, sorry, in the, the February, in the year, in the season before, as the corner comes in towards the back post, headed back into a dangerous area. Should be dealt with here by Gilles. In fact, Blackpool keep it in, and then Morris doesn't have to make a save. It goes into the side netting and out of play for a goal kick. It was there, it was the 3 2 win, of course, up at, at Blackpool the year before, Peter. Well, certainly, yes. I think uh, um, that, uh, that, was, that was quite some result at the time. and. Uh, a rare free goal salvo away from home for the duels, it must be said. But uh, um, that just then, just back then, free header at a corner. We can't be letting that happen. And I think we're just hoping the ball's going to go out for a goal kick, and it didn't. 
and uh, that could have been embarrassing thankfully the shot was a poor one remember as well the last game of the league one season when Steve Lovell left the job with a couple of games to go and Mark Patterson was the manager for that game at uh, Bloomfield Road and Tom Eve scored twice and Jules scored three goals that day as well in a, a fantastic victory so you have to go back 111 years though for the last time these two met in an FA Cup tie when Gillingham won by a single goal to nil I must confess I wasn't here for that one Here's Blackpool in possession. Opening 10 minutes, 0-0 currently here on BBC Radio Kent, on DAB and on FM. We're also on Listen Live today on BBC Sounds and the BBC Sport app and website if you want full commentary of Solihull Moors against Maidstone in this FA Cup first round. Updates as well from Tunbridge Angels against Harbour Town, the Leicestershire Minnows that are at Longmead this afternoon in front of that big packed home crowd as down the Blackpool right, a shot comes in down the middle, which is well saved by Glenn Morris from Embleton. That was on target, but easy for the goalkeeper. Just a quick one there from the Premier League. Latest score, Bournemouth 1, Man City 0. Antoine Semenya has got an early goal there. Manchester City like to give teams a little head start, don't they? That's, they that's, when, they, that's well, when they start playing. Ben, they've got a lot of injuries, Man City. Mm. Oh, it's, it's a hard time. We have to it? feel sorry for them. Do we? Um, yes. I think that obviously the other thing is that uh, Bournemouth have... Uh, that would be, uh, if it happened, it would be the second major club they might have put to the sword recently. Yeah, home. that was at home, wasn't it, as well? That victory over Arsenal as Nolan tries to nick it in centre field. For Chance Gilligan. of overload here. Jaden Clark now on the left-hand side. Taking on Jordan Gabriel. Comes in field. Armani Little on the edge of the box. Looks to shoot towards goal. Bends it towards the top corner, but well off target. But no harm in trying the shot. No, I think that... Uh, uh, as you probably expect, Blackpool uh, have, have passed the ball around on occasions quite nicely um, in and around the Jules box without causing a big concern um, as yet for Glenn Morris. I mean, that shot they had just a few minutes ago was pretty much straight out the Jules keeper. Um, but uh, Jules just want to keep him honest defensively. I think we're going to play quite a lot of the game without the ball. Um, and when it does come along, you know, we want to, to certainly test them out. And we've, there are a couple of times we've turned the ball over reasonably high up the pitch. Um, um, it's, it's if we can turn one of those into an actual uh, clear goal mouth opportunity. So Blackpool in possession with Embleton tucking in. Former Sunderland man on that right hand side, and yeah, it seems a feature that he's a bit of a, an old fashioned kind of right midfielder rather than a right winger. He's tucking in, and Jordan Gabriel, the right back, is really getting high up the pitch and is in behind here, but intercepted by Jaden Clark. For those that missed it earlier on, mentioned that Gabriel went to Haysbrook School in Tunbridge, won a few Kent Cups at age group level, as it's headed away by Blackpool and it drops here for Jack Nolan, who's all by himself at the moment, trying to drive forward down the left-hand side. He's handled it, hasn't he? Yeah, the, the, the decision has gone against him. He went down looking for a free kick himself and ended up falling on top of the ball. And the referee gives it the other way. Yeah, I think he's uh, I think got that one right, to be honest. I think he's just got... Uh, a little nudge, not enough for a free kick. Um, and then, as you say, he's, I mean, he's, he's literally landed on the ball. And uh, we've got not much option to give a free kick for handball. I think Jack Nolan's boots are more on the, the pink side, but they're certainly almost as fluorescent as the bright orange kit that Blackpool are wearing. I tell you, you're allowed to wear boots that might clash with the opposition's shirt. I suppose there's no laws against that, as far as I'm aware. Here's Gabriel with the blonde highlights and the bright yellow boots on the right-hand side for Blackpool pinged in towards the back post for Coulson who's uh, attacking from full back good defending Romeo Hutton manages to control it and clear away up the line Blackpool re-secure the ball and Nolan trying to win it back for Gills good physicality from him you have to say have that, back. that was an outrageous part of crossfield ball from Blackpool took uh, Hutton out of the game and, and thankfully the, uh, it was the first touch which was a very difficult skill meant that he got the opportunity to then nick the ball that's uh, that's something you don't see at League 2 level too often Maxima clearing Jill's lines and it's back with Gabriel in the right back position for Blackpool well, inside the opening 15 minutes I think to the, score. Sort of the pattern of play we're probably expecting Blackpool in possession quite a bit of the time probing away we've got to keep our concentration in our shape and play for those uh, those opportunities that we hope will come along at some point during the game ball played into midfield by Blackpool here is Finnegan, another Southampton Academy graduate in the side, along with the online Ballard as the ball is played forward, looking for Joseph, hooked away by Maxima. 
Now here's Carey trying to burst through a gap. Masterson uses goalkeeper Glenn Morris. Turquoise kit for the Jill's number one today. Clears it away. You can't help thinking at the moment that uh, Blackpool are, are, are looking more and more threatening um, as they probe away around the edge of the Jill's box. Coming down the right-hand side now. The League One outfit crossed in towards the penalty area. Carey trying to get onto it, can't control. If he had, that would have been an opportunity. A couple of goals to bring you. Uh, Brighton have scored at Anfield. Ferdi Cadioglu has got the, the first goal of the game there in the 14th minute. Welling are already 3-0 down at home to Chippenham Town in a basement battle uh, in National South. Better news for our Isthmian Premier sides. Folkestone lead 1-0 uh, at Carl Shulton, courtesy of a Daniel Smith goal. And Chatham are 1-0 up at home to high-flying Lewis. Freddie Sears has got that one. 0-0 here at Breesfield in this FA Cup first round tie. If so, as you, you know, we've reached the sort of 15 minute mark and, and the game is certainly settling into a, a possession ga based game for Blackpool and uh, Jules um, I, I think it will perhaps be on the break if we can get turnovers um, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure at the moment we're working very hard but we're, we're not at the moment really disrupting the, the flow and the rhythm for the Blackpool players um, it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of hard yards, I suspect, this afternoon, trying to make it as difficult as possible for them. Yeah, Lee Evans, the number seven, seeing a lot of the football at the moment, the former Wales international. One time, Wigan Ipswich, Wolves player, and he was the one that played that outrageous crossfield ball that Peter mentioned a moment ago. He's just dropping into the, well, in between the two centre-halves at the moment, just to get on the ball and almost play that kind of quarterback role, look for a big pass, if not, just keep things ticking over, going short here to... A fire gets it back now off Embleton, and then uses the other centre half in Casey. In possession, back to Evans, the captain for Blackpool. Fires it long, looking for Joseph in behind. That's a decent, well, almost a decent touch over the shoulder, and it goes through to Glenn Morris. I mean, that's that's the thing, isn't it? That at the moment, the Blackpool lost the possession midway inside their own half. And then they uh, they can ping that ball. The the forward players looking to get into the spaces, yeah, almost outside the centre backs. And there's a couple of times they put it into the space of where Hutton might be, or in behind Hutton, in particular on the Jules right. And uh, thankfully, they've been very difficult balls to control. And as a result of that, this the second touch has been for Jules to get possession back. But uh, um, certainly, uh, there's there's plenty to be not surprised about, but concerned about in the way that the game is going but probably yeah, much as we might have anticipated. Dover taking the lead in the Isthmian Premier against Potter's Bar Town. Ruben Suarez Jr. leaders Dover in that division. No score in our other FA Cup ties so far. Maidstone at Solihull Moors and a Tunbridge at home to Harbour Town. Both those commentaries available via the BBC Sport website and uh, app with uh, reports and goal updates into this game, of course. And this game is Gillingham against Blackpool in the first round of the FA Cup as well. Still goalless here, your commentary team on BBC Radio Kent Sports Hub, Peter Lloyd and Percy Ben Watts. Yeah, Jules, just at the minute, not quite sure in terms of how they want to build things through midfield, seeing Armani Little move around a fair bit on that left-hand side. There was a really nice clearance out from Morris. Quick ball out towards the left-hand side a moment ago, but nothing came of it in the end. Hutton now goes forward up towards Wakeling. Decent control on his chest, does well to keep the football. Referee has then penalised the Blackpool defender for the physicality on Wakeling. Yeah, I mean, that's a good work from the, uh, the referee because I think he's, he's looking to see if the advantage accrues. Nolan, if I may say so, was just dawdling a bit there when the ball came to him uh, on the second ball that he, you know, was, he was had his pocket picked and perhaps a little bit fortunate that the ref then pulled it back. Maybe uh, maybe Nolan knew it was going to be a free kick. Well, Nolan is over said free kick, albeit it's a fair old way out for a, a shot could, on could goal. We, could we make a wild guess at around about 32, 33 yards based on where the refs put the wall? But, uh, it's straight on to the goals. It's not an easy one necessarily to make an angle. That's got power behind this left foot, Jack Nolan. And might, as a result, go for power. Or Armani Little could change the angle back towards the likes of Masterson and Dieng, and he does so, aiming for the Frenchman. And there's a foul on... Evans by Dieng, the referee has picked up on and it will be a defensive free kick to the, the visiting Tangerines yeah, I'm not sure whether he's uh, Conor Masterson is uh, the, uh, the subject of the ref's concern now I think uh, 
That's a couple of times Connor would say he's been penalised perhaps slightly softly. Yeah, I think he was looking a little bit guilty, wasn't he, when he made his way back to his defensive position. Ball played forward up towards Ballard and Joseph, a couple of very mobile forward players. Do have some experience on the bench in uh, those kind of areas of the pitch. Jordan Rhodes, 245 career goals. and He's played a bit, hasn't he? Yeah, he's played a, a fair bit in, in the, and been prolific at whatever level he's gone to in EFL football. The likes of Ashley Fletcher as well. He's uh, floated in around a couple of Premier League Championship clubs in his younger days. That's an good. option off the bench as well. Good, uh, good anticipation there from Ogie. Realised the ball was going to get played down the line. Just got his body in front of his man and waited almost to be shoved over. Return as well for Elkin Bagger, another goal-scoring defender. He's on the bench today. The Ipswich Town loan he is. That one's cleared away. It was left for Glenn Morris by Masterson. Yeah. Maxima and Masterson are currently yelling at one another. Morris's clearance hit the forward and has gone out of play for a goal kick, but... Well, in the end, that was OK, but it could have ended a little bit messily. I, I think that, uh, if I'm honest, I would be perhaps looking at Connor for that one. Um, it's, it's one thing to quite rightly, if he wants to let the ball run through to the keeper, that's absolutely fine. But he's then got to get his body across to the, uh, the man and not let him get through quite so easily to get close to Glenn Morris there. It's, it's not sexy, but that's what you've got to do. You've got to block the man off so that your keeper's got plenty of time. Jill's having struggled to keep the ball and, as I say, build up some sort of possession in recent moments, then trying to build up from the back. In the end, it ended up with Glenn Morris clearing the ball away as if he was taking a goal kick anyway, and then Jack Nolan has been clattered. Well, I think it's a bit of a freebie for the defender, that one. Jack Nolan, not renowned for his aerial prowess, and uh, he, he was not going to win that one in a month for Sundays, and I think the defender's just uh, just made sure he knows he's about. Yeah, hasn't actually been given as a free kick. It's uh, an Ajil's goal kick after the header that was subsequently won before Nolan received the contact. And uh, this time Morris just clears downfield, looking for Dieng because he's the aerial threat and wins the first contact. Black will go up the line. I think that ball has gone out of play. Yeah, I mean, I, can, I think that's uh, quite understandable. Glenn, they're kicking for Tim Dieng. He's he's the one player, especially pulling out into a kind of fullback position defensively for Blackpool. Morris passing short out from the back, looking for Maxima. Goes a bit more direct downfield. Cleared away by Casey. Casey at the back, Carey in midfield for Blackpool today. Ewan Williams, though, tidy at the moment in that defensive midfield area. And when Jules are trying to play out from the back, they're trying to get it from defender into Ewan Williams and see if he can shift it from there. Well, if anyone's playing a kind of quarterback role in midfield for, for Jules, then it certainly is Ewan Williams. Nice from Ogie to turn away from his man and then slide the ball into the inside left channel for Wakeling. Nobody arriving in blue yet, but now they come. As he tries to get a cross in and it's blocked by Casey. Clearance away only as far as Armani Little, though. Referee says the ball's got a puncture or something. Little smashed it into the Brian Moore stand. Well, <laughs> that was bizarre. We're getting the, we've got the ball back. How are we going to restart this? Shields have possession, so we'll presume to get an uncontested drop ball. And he'll start a little to go back with it. Surely. Jules had possession. Very bizarre. Well, Little gets it back and gives it to Ewan Williams. So we go again with Jules on the right hand side now. Masterson feeding Hutton. Tim Dieng back to Ewan Williams. Gets it back now off Masterson. Clean tidy from Jules. Shadogi goes for the switch of play, looking for Hutton on this right hand side. Hutton just about controlling it and keeping it in play. Before going all the way back to Morris. You know, we've got to be uh, trying to show a few signs of frustration. I just think we've got to be patient here. Know that it's going to be a difficult afternoon. And when we do get a bit of ball, really just try and cherish possession and try and build play, not try and go direct too quickly. Casey's header away. Flicked around the corner looking for Joseph. Ballard had knocked it on. Referee says there was a foul from Ballard. On Ema, I think. I'm not sure if he's get bizarrely given a, a handball there um, against the Blackpool player who kicked it, seems to kick it into his own face. But there we go. Ref knows best. Jill's got a free kick. Yeah, Matt's agreeing. So, there we go. Jill's clear through Glenn Morris. 
up towards the left-hand side and out of play. Brought shell of a goal back at home to Bromley now in the FA Cup. So Sam Beckwith with that goal. Uh, Bromley scoring twice in the first three minutes to uh, try and make the second round for the first time in 79 years. Rochdale pegging them back just a little bit. Rochdale 1, Bromley 2. Goal is here at Breesfield. It's been Gillingham of League 2, Blackpool of League 1. No stranger to playing one another in league football in recent seasons, as we've already mentioned. Pretty even split across the kind of head-to-head -head and draw record. Of course, if it's a draw in 90 minutes, we'll play extra time and penalties today. That's good pressure from Wakeling to turn the ball over. Ewan Williams has it in centre field after being fed by Jaden Clark. Hutter picks the ball up, knocks it long in behind. Once the run of Wakeling, a fire awkwardly controlled and then clears. And yeah. a play for a throw in high up the right hand side. Yeah, look for a moment, so he's going to concede a pretty cheap corner. That's where Jules, what is our out ball? If he gets tight spaced, looking for a run, particularly from Wakeling um, and, and Hutton, especially, and prepared to play that ball into the, the channel. Long foul opportunity for Jules. Blackpool leaving three players up the pitch. We want to keep switched on here. Little comes short to receive the ball. Jack Nolan has space and will shoot towards goal. And there was a bit of slice on it from the left foot of Jack Nolan that was always just taking it wide of Richard O'Donnell's right-hand post, but well, well worth the try, having had the space created for him by that little burst from Armani Little to come short from the throw-in, and of course, with, as we mentioned, all those Blackpool players high up the pitch. Yeah, certainly it was a... They were saying a little bit of a gamble, I suppose, for Little, but he backed himself on his touch, and uh, for Nolan, not surprising, he took the shot on. Um, I, I think he perhaps didn't quite get his feet set to, to really get perhaps the... Uh, the power um, and uh, the, the keeper in fairness I, I suspect had it covered if it had been on target but uh, again it's things for, for the crowd to get positive about and uh, get involved in. Women's FA Cup action tomorrow if you want to listen back to some of our interviews with the Kent clubs involved in it you can check out the huddle on BBC Sounds right now as Amani Little comes forward down the left hand side for Gillingham a fire in the right back area for Blackpool looks to clear Ball's gone out of play, has it? Yes, I think so. And it's been given as a black ball throw in. Well, that's a slightly strange one. The, the, uh, the referee has given that throw in because he blew his whistle and then the assistant put his flag up on the far side. So uh, that is a bit odd. Um, but uh, Jill's actually there. Little found a huge space. Uh, good thing his, his pass inside didn't go to Wakeling, who unfortunately had gone offside. Wakeling trying to chase this ball in behind from Ogie and it's been missed by a fire. So Wakeling, left-hand side of the penalty box. A lot of orange shirts around him. Gets help now from Little. Crosses deep towards the back post of the left foot. Headed away by Coulson. And now Blackpool look to try and counter-attack here. Sonny Kerry, the number 10, driving forward, using his pace. Taking on Masterson into the penalty area. One into the pitch, the other from Blackpool. Challenge comes in from Masterson. Ball out of play for a corn. Yeah, certainly there. Um, you'd have to say uh, uh, Blackpool been kept quiet for a few moments but suddenly that, that burst forward and uh, Marston just about did enough to, uh, to, to block out the opportunity Everyone back for Jills then for this set play Embleton to take it left footed out swinger incoming it away by Masterson right footed shot comes in from Evans and it's blocked once again by Marston, it was there again, but certainly a Jules defender clearing it out of play for a throw in on the right hand side for the visitors. Remains 0 0 in the FA Cup here on BBC Radio Kent. Yeah, slightly better defending in that corner. No free head is given away. Looks like a long throw for the visitors. Steve Bruce, the Blackpool manager, just shouting out some instructions a moment ago to his right back, Jordan Gabriel. This long throw coming in now towards the near post headed away by Tim Dieng not quite the torpedo of the, the Tamworth player last night here's Gabriel now dancing in towards the penalty area Shad Ogie goes with him and makes a good block cleared away by Tim Dieng so Jill's deal with the, the threat did you see that one la last night Peter that the, the goalkeeper has, has punched in after the, the direct throw in towards the middle I must say it was a, a very strange playing surface I'm not sure team there weren't many teams in in League One or League Two, looking forward to being drawn away to Tamworth. Um, it was it was very strange surface, played very difficultly. I think if you if you were looking to try and um, pass the ball around, and uh, 
Um, yeah, they're pretty basic approach with the uh, the foe ends. Yeah, former uh, Kent cricketer Matt Milnes' his brother in that midfield as well for with Tamworth last night. If you want to hear all the latest from Kent cricket, again, listen back on the huddle we had Simon Cook, the Kent director of cricket, with us last night as the challenge comes in from Maxime. I know free kick says the referee. Ogie knocks it forward up towards Wakeling. It's a bit of a one-on-one -on -one situation for him up against the fire. He manages to win the ball back for the League One side. Now Joseph, the number nine driving forward, trying to slot this in for Ballard. But quickly off his line comes Glenn Morris. Yeah, I think uh, um, Max uh, was uh, thinking he was about to be the victim of a, a free kick, which wasn't given. And then I think he, he thought the assistant should have given an offside when the ball was played in behind. Um, Shadogi, but uh, Glenn Morris was on his bike immediately. But, uh, the kick out for Morris um, eluded Dieng, who was his intended target. It's gone out of play for a to the visitors. Just outside there, 20 yards area from that line. No Premier League goal, Chris Wood, goal machine at the moment for Nottingham Forest, who lead West Ham United by a goal to nil. Uh, Dover have doubled their lead over Potter's Bar at town. They'll do some to equal their reverse fixture. It was 8 nil to Dover on the opening day of the season. They've got two, though. Alpha Matthews getting the second for the league leading at Whites. Here it's goalless between Gillingham and Blackpool. It's goalless between Maidstone uh, at Solihull Moors and Tunbridge at home to Harborough in two uh, online commentaries via the BBC Sport website and app. This one's on BBC Sounds, uh, the Jills at home to Blackpool and of course on all radio frequencies. Your commentary team, Peter Lloyd, firstly Ben Watts. A couple of flick-ons from Jills. Tim Dieng knocks it out towards the right-hand side for Hutton, taking on a fire. That's come off the defender. Dieng trying to keep it alive inside the penalty box. Here's Jack Nolan on his left foot, shoots towards goal. Keepers fumbled it and then just about grabbed it. Well, that was a pretty cute effort from Nolan. Um, I think he almost surprised the goalkeeper with the, the shot to the near post for some, some legs. And uh, certainly that, that could have been very embarrassing for the keeper with the, uh, the fumble. Uh, but fortunately, he didn't go far enough away for him to be totally embarrassed. Um, but uh, a better moment from Jules. Got the ball forward. Um, I think Dieng did remarkably well to keep the ball in play when it was going to spiral out for Jules' corner. Oh, header away by Jaden Clark. Off his line, the goalkeeper at the moment. Here comes Sonny Carey. Challenge comes in from Max Ema. Blackpool really probably should have got a shot off sooner there because Glenn Morris came a long way to go and get the ball. One back, though, by Ballard. Into the penalty area. A little back heel back towards him. He goes down inside the box. Referee says no penalty. I mean, that's the right decision. I can see why he's gone down. There's a pretty blatant shove in the back. He's going to get Jules a free kick virtually on the halfway line. I think we'll, we'll take that. Thank you very much some lovely feet dancing tempted to dance through in the centre of the goal and then in the wider area a little flick as well um, and uh, I think that uh, you can see why the lad's going to go down you think the, the, his teammates gave away I suspect that uh, they didn't think it was a penalty either um, and I think the referee's got that one right but uh, again it just demonstrates in the blink of an eye there's some real finesse about this Blackpool team um, and uh, Fortunately, from a Jules point of view, we, we just about dealt with that one. Yeah, he's certainly got a bit of pace about him, Ballard. Diminutive forward, but he almost looked off balance as he went to ground a little bit too easily inside the penalty box. Jules go forward up towards Dieng, flicks it on for Hutton. He does really well to slide and keep that ball in play, and then wins a throw in as well. Yeah, that's, that's the. If we're going to go from back to front, really, we are looking to kick for Dieng to try and win a first head though and he did that and, and certainly Hutton who's trying to pinch as many yards as he can um, here but the ref's not having a bar of it um, although he's pinched a few still long for opportunity but we're not exactly packing the box Chills instead goes short between Hutton and Newham Williams and Maxima has it on halfway Shadow I wonder if the last tackle out on the touchline when he got robbed to the ball just Armani. led to a little knock for Hutton yeah Armani Little there fouled by Gabriel Free kick just inside the Blackpool oh, half. I think he got there as quick as he could. Is he being carded there? I don't think we've seen one given. The, uh, oh, there we go. There it is. There's the yellow card for Jordan Gabriel on his return back to Kent. The ref had already got his Christmas card out for him. And uh, doesn't have a tangerine one. But a nice shiny yellow one. Same colour as Jordan Gabriel's boots. Free kick then for Jills. 
I'm suddenly looking around to see who's wearing red boots. Hopefully, no one with a Jules shirt on. Jordan, Jaden Clark, rather. Lovely reverse for Marmani Little. Here's Jack Nolan, left footed crossing towards the penalty area, looking for Masterson. Coulson got there just in front of him to head it behind for a corner. Yeah, again, because we've got players up already, if we effectively a set play, um, it was uh, that's the time to, to perhaps knock a cross like that in. Defender's done well to uh, to hold Masterson off and just make sure he gets his header. But Jill's first corner of the afternoon, and uh, as the half draws towards a conclusion, just getting one or two decent moments. Just notice Glenn Morris run all the way to the, the centre circle. Very hard, the pitch. I think the Blackpool fans are alerting the referee that the ball may not be in the quadrant. Armani Little was then. As the money was worked out, they just, are behind him. Just dragged the ball <laughs> back into said quadrant. A couple of Jules players make interesting runs. Jaden Clark receives the ball. He's one of them. Armani Little now goes to the edge of the box for Nolan to shoot left footed. Shouts of handball, a deflection or fall for Maxima. Still plenty of men in blue inside the box. Knocks it back to Hutton. He looks to cross this deep towards the back post. Wakeling arriving, keeps it alive. In fact, the linesman says it's gone out of play. It was an intricate move from Jules from the corner, resulting in the left-footed shot from Nolan, which was blocked. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, pretty cute stuff. Everyone's expecting a standard ball into the box. Some big guys trying to win a header. Changed it around a little bit. Um, and uh, it's certainly uh, um, the, uh, the, the player making the block. Um, it, would, it was the right height for handball, but I think it may have hit his uh, head and torso rather than the, uh, the arm, unfortunately. So it remains nil-nil here on BBC Radio Kent Sports Hub this afternoon. Still nil-nil in our other FA Cup first round ties as well. All of them could go to extra time and penalties. We certainly hope that that won't necessarily need to be the case for our Kent clubs to go through and be in the hat for round two as Joseph has clearly knock Teamer over you'd have Jules to say, love a defensive free kick you'd have to say that uh, um, for a man of some strength Maxima um, obviously tumbled to the turf there um, and it's a bit the, the bite a bit maybe thinking there'd been some soft ones for Blackpool back to Morris from Ema and the goalkeeper clears up towards halfway a fire completely misjudged that didn't even go up for the header in the end Fortunately for the Blackpool defender, Jacob Wakeling miscontrolled it because he wasn't expecting it to get to him. <laughs> is, there, is there a swirling wind that we're not familiar with here? It doesn't look like it. But there's a few players that misjudged the bounce. Yeah, it's not the first occasion. Jordan Gabriel with an early ball in towards the penalty area. Cleared away by Shadogi. Marnie Little is almost playing at left wing back at times along with Jordan Clark, who clears. Wasn't the best clearance from him. Embleton. Sonny Gary shoots in off the post and Blackpool take the lead. Slammed in by Carey. Jill's failure to clear the ball from the left wing back area. Fizzed across the edge of the box. And Carey, the left midfielder, has struck it beautifully in off the post. No chance for Glenn Morris. 38 minutes gone. It's Gillingham nil. Blackpool 1. Well, unfortunately, there, um, you know, like many goals, you can sort of work back far enough to say, did we contribute to that? And I think that uh, sadly, um, Jaden Clark, not the best clearance, gave possession back to the uh, the visitors in a very advanced position. Uh, but even so, when it's made its way to Carey, you can't odds that quality of connection. No, as you say, no chance at all for, for Glenn Morris. He's just outside the box. He's maybe got a bit of good fortune, you could say. It could have gone anywhere off the inside of the post, but it's gone in. Um, but... Uh, Cheap possession given away in a, in a bad area from a Jewish point of view, and then a, a really a quality hit. Challenge goes in from a Jewish player, free kick given by the referee, Sonny Carey. Brought up in Norfolk, former Norwich City youngster, but actually was with a Kings Lynn Town in non league football that kind of really made his mark before getting his move to Blackpool and uh, showing his quality there with that finish and another chance here possibly for Blackpool with Joseph getting in behind into the penalty area they're queuing up on the edge of the box and it's been scooped over the top and really Ryan Finnegan in that situation should have done better the irony there I think is that if, if Oki doesn't get a touch the ball goes through to Glenn Morris but because he's tried to intercept it he's taken the pace off it given Blackpool a chance to get forward um, and certainly there, the, the, pre, the minimum prerequisite with a pullback like that is hitting the target. 
and uh, maybe he hasn't got his feet quite as organised as he wanted but thankfully been a couple of yards over the bar and uh, suddenly with five six minutes to half time plus stoppages we're fact thinking let's get into half time um, at one nil Blackpool buzzing a bit quality hit for the goal Jules uh, just going to stabilise the ship a little bit nicely forward from Ogi towards Dieng and then the Dieng pass was a fairly basic one I was trying to play ahead of Hutton Hutton probably wanted it to feet I mean at least Dieng's got the good grace to apologise that was an absolutely awful pass to uh, to Hutton gave him no, gave him probably the best chance of a trip to casualty to I, be I was trying to dress it up wasn't I and Coulson slid in with the challenge Jill's have this throw in as a result long throw opportunity Hutton will go long Dieng and Ema will be the targets Dieng doesn't get there. Little shoots left footed off target. No deflection. I think uh, trying to persuade the ref that uh, it's caught that uh, Blackpool player. I don't think uh, anyone believes that. Unfortunately, he's got a bit of a perler um, not that long ago against Accrington at the main event of Italy with his left foot. So, probably trying to take that one on. Chills uh, were top of the table when he did that. Remember that time? Well, those times may yet come again. Cleared away by Coulson. Certainly that'll be the hope for Mark Bonner after a disastrous October, having been manager of the month for August and nominated for manager of the month for September in League Two. Neither of these sides with a win in the league in the last month. Blackpool last time out drew with Wigan, but the three matches prior to that they all they lost in a row. Of course, Steve Bruce having made a, a pretty big impact on you first, kind of took the job by surprise. I don't think anyone was expecting a return to the dugout for him necessarily, but yeah, they won their five of their six first games with him in charge. You know, I think here yeah, it's the same that uh, in the right circumstances shows you almost certain people just can't retire. And uh, and good for him. Yeah, hopefully he's, he's getting out of it. Obviously, personal circumstances in the last few weeks have been pretty horrid, to say the least. Um, but, uh, you know, he's someone who's uh, been involved in the game, you know, almost his entire life. And... Uh, um, let's hope he, apart from today at least, that he makes a reasonable fist of it. Yeah, he's managing some big clubs, the likes of Newcastle United and they didn't quite Birmingham uh, City. Have the resources when, uh, when I think when Steve was uh, was picking the team at uh, St James's, but uh, um, even so, uh, you know he's, he's certainly had a, an illustrious career as a player and as a manager, and uh, um, you know hopefully he can. Uh, have a, a bit more success at, uh, at League One level, albeit not in the FA Cup. We have our first goal in our FA Cup. Three ties this afternoon. It's at Longmead, at Tunbridge against Harborough. Which way has it gone, though, Matt Eastley? Well, Matt, we talked about the physical threat of Harbour Town, and it's just that threat that's got the first goal here. It was a corner swung in from the left, and Paul Malone, the massive uh, centre-back, got his head to it. Matt Rowley could only palm it into the roof of the net. It's Tunbridge Angels nil, Harbour Town 1. It would be a shock if Harbour could pull that one off, but uh, we said they were a big physical side. Matt Eastley saying that that has uh, paid the price as well. Tunbridge then one down, our first score in our FA Cup ties. Commentary of that one online, also of Maidstone at Solihull Moors here on the radio and on BBC Sounds. It's Gillingham nil, uh, Blackpool one. So both uh, two of our sides are the three uh, behind. Uh, a free kick won by Gillingham as they try and come forward for half time. A Blackpool player has just talked himself into the referee's notebook. Peter Lloyd and Ben Watts. Yeah, Ryan Finnegan's reaction to the referee giving a free kick against his side after uh, the hold-up play from, from I'm, Jacob Wakeling. I'm not sure whether that might have been Lee Evans that got that card. That... Uh, he appears to have the most demonstrative response, but certainly there's been a card dished out. That's that's absolutely for we'll sure. We'll double check for you who has received the card. As the ball is played forward from the free kick by Jules towards Maxima. He might pick it up here inside the penalty area, but then the referee has stopped play. Masterson was offside, unfortunately. The flick on from Ema. Masterson had already gone beyond the uh, the, uh, the the last defender. So although the, the second ball then fell for, for Max, um, the assistant, unfortunately, has got that one uh, spot on. So as Matt says, Chillingham and Tomridge Angels behind. You'd have looked at the draw going into this round of matches. You'd have probably said that Maidstone had the toughest of the bunch, really. Kind of a, a team, a good standard at the level above. Not quite the same kind of attraction. And, you know, some of the teams that they knocked out last year. 
Tunbridge at home, probably the ones that thought they might even get furthest of all the Kent clubs and find themselves behind against Harbour. Yeah, still uh, you know, fair way to go, but uh, um, certainly you would look at those three ties and probably say that Tunbridge would be the ones most expected to get through. But uh, yeah, we've got to worry about ourselves here. Jack Nolan of Gillingham trying to get them back in the game from 1-0 down. Here's Jaden Clark taking on Jordan Gabriel, the right back for Blackpool. Gabriel gets his toe on the ball. And then we'll look to try and clear. Embleton helps him out. Ogie comes forward and wins the header. Then Joseph and Ballard combine. Ball up the line for Blackpool. One added minute at the end of the first half to be played here at Priestfield. Still the ball in play over on the left-hand side. Shadogi trying to wrestle his way forward. Jills have got either a throw or a free kick over on that side. Yeah, I'm not sure if that might be a free kick, actually, but uh, the, uh, the, the Ogie was tripped. Um, but uh, I think uh, being suggested we might like to push some players forward um, in this circumstance. Last opportunity, one assumes, of the half. Uh, Jaden Clark has almost from the first whistle has, has just been a little bit out of sorts this afternoon yeah it doesn't look comfortable in that left wing back position compared to playing that bit higher on the pitch it was Finnegan who got the yellow card as uh, Jill's with this free kick then from Armani Little load it towards the edge of the Blackpool box in fact Little was ended up firing it towards the goalkeeper it was nearer the nearer being a shot than a cross in the end but it was neither and there's the half-time whistle then. Gillingham nil, Blackpool one at the break. Sonny Carey's left-footed finish off the inside of the post after Jill's failed to clear their lines in their left-back area. The difference between the teams at the break. Blackpool have been tidy in possession. Jill's a little bit more direct in attack. A couple of opportunities for Nolan from range. One wide, one blocked. Little, likewise, has had a, a couple of tries off target. And then the Blackpool goal. The one real moment of quality in the game so far, Peter Lloyd. Yes, I think that uh, there's, there's been a lot of endeavour. Certainly the game was in that first half has been characterised by Blackpool being in possession, looking to try and get their, their speedy forwards into spaces behind and, and alongside our central defenders. Um, and uh, uh, Jill's finding it difficult to make chances, as we perhaps anticipated. Um, and Blackpool probing, um, but uh, really almost uh, out of nowhere. The, the goal came along as we were heading towards half-time. Um, yes, we, we could have defended better. We, we gave the ball away slightly cheaply as we tried to clear it from uh, our own left corner flag area. And uh, you have to then say, though, that Blackpool moved the ball inside. And uh, it's, uh, it's a lovely hit. I'm sure the manager may well say could we have closed him down quicker. But uh, it, it's, it's a really a, a tremendous strike. No chance for Glenn Morris. And uh, in a game where there's lots of endeavour, a lot of possession for Blackpool, Jules have got to be playing for the bits and pieces and uh, thus far haven't caused too much threat to the visitors goal but it will just take one moment and this cup tie could well and truly be alive. Food for thought for Mark Bonner at half time I mean do, do you think this formation has gaps in it that he might try and address in the second half or change things around or, or would you would you perhaps go for, for what you've got and, uh, and say we've been solid enough so far? I'd, I would wonder that uh, um, as we, we picked out just for half time, Jaden Clark has not had the best first half. That would sort of naturally lend itself to perhaps going to a four. I mean, obviously Max Clark is the is, is the, the player on the bench to come and play there, but I don't think Max necessarily offers the same attacking intensity as Jaden would. Um, you yeah, know, if we, we we go to a four, uh, but that will then I suspect leave even bigger spaces for the Blackpool forwards. So it's quite a dilemma that whether we keep the shape. But uh, I'm, I'm not sure today, at the moment, Jaden Clark's going to score a hat-trick in the second half, by the way. But I'm not sure it's been his day thus far. Um, so whether we, we try and give ourselves a bit more opportunity through midfield to pass the ball. And Martin Little's almost a little bit wasted out on the left-hand side. He's not been able to be influential, which he clearly is an influential player in League 2 level, certainly. So, a bit of food for thought for the manager. Um, I guess that's what he gets paid for. Absolutely right. We don't have to make those decisions. We can, uh, we can decide ourselves at half-time what we think we do. But uh, Dillingham are a goal to kneel down. A real piece of quality, as the, uh, the guys were saying, that shot from the edge of the box is hitting the inside of the post. It was some force as well. But they are a goal to kneel down then 
uh, Gillingham at, at half time. I think we heard uh, certainly a goal in one of our other games. So let's go to Tunbridge Angels against uh, Harborough Town now. Uh, Tunbridge of the two sides, favourites to go through, certainly on league position, but uh, they are behind at the break. Matt Eastley has been watching the first 45 at Longmead. They are indeed behind, Matt, and in front of an incredible record crowd of 3,132. It's Tunbridge Angels nil, Harbour Town 1 at half-time. We're warned about Harbour Town's physical presence, and it was exactly that which produced the goal. It was a corner swung in from the left by Josh Walsh, and there was Paul Malone from looked about six yards out with a bullet header, which Matt Rowley got a hand to, could only parry it into the roof of the net. It was a powerful header. It was goal-bound. Rowley nearly saved it, but just in front of the travelling Harbour Town fans, it beat below the net to make it 1-0. Just before that, Matt, Noel Layton had uh, produced a lovely slide rule ball across the face of the, uh, the goal, which Jason Adigan so nearly got on the end of to, to score. And six minutes earlier on 31 minutes, as a trademark Sean Shields cut in from the left and produced a great shot, but was equaled by Elliot Taylor in the Harbour Town goal. Harbour Town have uh, more than matched Tunbridge Angels. They've come here to... Uh, as I say, spoil the party, so to speak, and they've uh, fought for every single ball, uh, ball and their physical presence at the back. Well, Tumbridge just haven't managed to be able to break that down at the moment. Noel Layton hasn't really had a sniff. Jason Adigan's had a few runs at them. Sean Shield, they're playing a very, very high-pressing game, Harbour Town, which is not giving Tumbridge any space for manoeuvre whatsoever. And they've got their goal. They've got their noses ahead. And now Tumbridge Angels have got to come out and save their FA Cup, if you like like in this 45 minutes I suspect uh, Jay Saunders will be giving him a bit of a roasting and sort of say get out there and play for the shirt they haven't really troubled Harbour Town as I say it's Harbour Town who've got their noses ahead with that 41st minute goal from Paul Malone at half time it's Tunbridge Angels nil Harbour Town 1 Matt, thank you very much indeed. So uh, full commentary to come with that one in the second half of the BBC Sport website and app, a regular Grohl updates and uh, reports as well. As we have of Maidstone against Solihull Moors, uh, an incredible effort last uh, season, a fairy tale uh, for a Maidstone. Are oh, they going to make it beyond round one this year? Let's uh, hear the story of the first 45 at Solihull Moors uh, with Matt Gerrard. Yeah, half time here, match. Solihull Moors nil, Maidstone United nil. I think George Jellicoe will be the happier man at half time. I have to say, Solihull Moors had plenty of op possession, created a couple of opportunities. More balls floated inside the penalty area. It was Connor Wilkinson, the former Gillingham man. He went close to the one that skimmed off the top of his head. As one's gone from uh, the uh, big centre half, Alex Whitmore, the ball floated in from the ever dangerous uh, Jack Stevens on this uh, left hand side, playing, uh, always trying to get it on his right. And he came close as well on four minutes. One that fizzed across the penalty area. We haven't seen too much from Maystone, but they looked at dangerous on the counter attack. And they look to be in control in this game, defending quite brightly. When they haven't got the ball, again, two banks of four, really just keeping the visitors at bay who are quite happy to play around and maybe at times have been a little bit over overplaying you could probably say they have had one yellow card for the stones when that ben brooks was brought down my adu poku was too quick for him but then maybe a glimmer of hope on 42 minutes may still have the best opportunity big foul to george fowler the center half who came back into the side this afternoon all fell to him on the edge of the penalty area. probably had more time than he thought of and he ballooned it over the crossbar they don't they're in this time Matt. again you just feel the first goal wherever goes could be so crucial but again as we said does the manager's tactics change we know it can't go to a replay when you get to 70 minutes the tides go for it or do they try and play for extra time could be an interesting second half but at the moment Maystone is still in the cup so they hold nil Maystone nil Matt, thank you. You can catch someone online, as I've just said, as well. A full commentary of all three of those games then coming up in the second half. Two Kent sides behind Gillingham and Tunbridge. One on level pegging with the opposition, uh, Maidstone. Let's get a full check of the other half times. Now we're all the half times uh, with Sam. Yeah, thanks, Matt. Let's bring you those scores starting in the Premier League. In today's early kickoff, it finished Newcastle United 1, Arsenal 0. To the half times, it's currently AFC Bournemouth 1, Manchester City 0. Ipswich Town 0, Leicester City 0. Liverpool 0, Brighton Hove Albion 1. Nottingham Forest 1, West Ham United 0. And Southampton 0, Everton 0. To the Championship now, three early kickoffs there. It finished Blackburn Rovers 0, Sheffield United 2. Oxford United 1, Swansea City 2, 
Stoke City 2, Derby County 1. To the half times, it's currently Cardiff City 0, Norwich City 0, Hull City 1, Portsmouth 0, Leeds United 3, Plymouth Argyle 0, Middlesbrough 0, Coventry City 1, Preston North End 0, Bristol City 1, Queen's Park Rangers 0, Sunderland 0, and Sheffield Wednesday 1, Watford 1. Now let's have a look at your Kent teams in the Cup and non-league, starting in the FA Cup first round. At half-time, it's Gillingham 0, Blackpool 1, Rochdale 1, Bromley 2, Sullyhole Moors 0, Maidstone United 0, Tunbridge Angels 0, Harbour Town 1. To the National League South now, it's Welling United 0, Chippenham Town 3. In the Isthmian League Premier Division, at halftime, it's Cole Shelton Athletic 0, Folkestone and Victor 1, Chatham Town 1, Lewis 0, Cray Wanderers 2, Hashtag United 0, Dartford 0, Cray Valley Paper Mills 0, and Dover Athletic 2, Potters Bar Town 0. And finally, in the Isthmian League South East Division, at halftime, it's AFC Croydon Athletic 1, Hearn Bay 1, Broadbridge Heath 1, Margate 1, Burgess Hill Town 0, Ashford United 0, Deal Town 2, Hythe Town 0, East Grinstead Town 0, Erith Town 4, Eastbourne Town 0, Ramsgate 1, Phoenix Sports 3, Stenning Town Community 2, Seven Oaks Town 1, Littlehampton Town 1, Sheppey United 0, Beckenham Town 0, and finally, Sittingbourne at two, three bridges, nil. That's all of your half-time scores. Now back to Matt Cole, Ben Watson, Peter Lloyd at Priestfield. The Sports Hub. The Sports Hub. BBC Radio Kent. Yeah, just to fill you in on the other half times in the FA Cup first round it's uh, Barrow nil Doncaster Rovers nil uh, Brackley Town remember them Jill's fans uh, perhaps you don't want to uh, nil a Braintree Town nil uh, Bradford City nil Aldershot Town one so potential shock there Bristol Rovers one Western Supermare nil no West Country Derby uh, Burton Albion nil Scarborough nil uh, Carlisle United nil, Wigan Athletic nil, uh, Chesterfield one, Horsham nil. On to uh, Crew Alexandra nil, Dagenham and Redbridge nil. It's 1-1 one, one between Exeter City and Barnet currently. Uh, Grimsby nil, Wealdstone nil. Uh, Hedsford Town, the lowest ranked team left in the competition. Two, Gainsborough Trinity nil. Uh, Maidenhead United nil, Crawley Town nil. Uh, Newport County 2, Peterborough United 1. Northampton against Kettering uh, is uh, a 5.30 kickoff. Big derby there uh, as well in Northamptonshire. Uh, Port Vale 1, Barnsley 1. Uh, Gillingham playing Port Vale next weekend, of course. Reading 0, uh, Fleetwood Town 0. Rochdale 1, Bromley 2 is a half-time score. Bromley having scored twice uh, in the opening at three minutes. Rochdale getting a goal back halfway through the half. Uh, Rotherham United 1, Cheltenham Town 2. Russell Olympic 0, Accrington Stanley 0. Salford City 2, uh, Shrewsbury Town 1. Uh, South End United 1, Charlton Athletic 2 at half-time. Stevenage nil, Geisley nil is a half-time score. So to Stockport County nil, Forest Green Rovers nil, uh, Swindon Town nil, Colchester United nil, Tranmere Rovers one, Oldham Athletic one, uh, Walsall nil, Bolton Wanderers nil, uh, Woking nil, Cambridge United nil, uh, Worthing nil, Morecambe one, and Wickham Wanderers 2, uh, York City 1. So not many shocks on the cards, I suppose you could say. At this point, De Harbour at Tunbridge certainly uh, upsetting their league standings and all the shot at Bradford as well, uh, potentially. I, I forget myself there, actually. Could be Newport County 2, uh, Peterborough's 1 as well. And uh, perhaps even Hensford down at 2, Gainsborough Trinity 0. Uh, here, we're hoping for Gillingham to come back against 
And Blackpool in the second half, they trailed by a goal to nil and Tunbridge hoping, as I was saying, to get back against Harborough Town, a goal to nil down at home as well, while Maidstone are nil nil at Solihull Moors. Our three FA Cup first round commentaries coming for you this afternoon. I think Doug has just announced that the Jills are coming out. I don't know if I noticed. That. Oh, I can't stop using that joke. It's terrible. Uh, but there we go. Uh, they are coming out, Gillingham then on for the second half. Uh, Jacob Wakeling leads them out, sprinting towards the halfway line. The, the subs are gradually clearing uh, the two halves of the pitch here. And here come Blackpool uh, to our right as well. Can't see the fourth official at the moment. Certainly the board were uh, warming up. Peter Lloyd indicating, I think, that all the subs... Uh, we're on the field, Peter, rather than off it uh, in the dressing room, so we should be unchanged for the second period. Well, certainly the uh, the Jules 11 are on the pitch, so unless someone's going to get the hook, having been sent out of the dressing room, that would be pretty unusual, to say the least. Um, so uh, I think there's not going to be uh, too much of a change from the, uh, the Jules' perspective, so one assumes, um, will we keep the same shape? Um, yeah, there might be a case to be made, even with keeping the personnel that Ogie could go to left back and Clark could play further forward and, and, and potentially then give Little a chance to come inside to, to give us a, uh, you know, a different shape to the team. Um, I think that will certainly, uh, um, be, if that was to happen, I think it would be quite challenging for, for Connor and for Max because the, the two lads up front look a bit tidy. Um, but uh, yeah, we've, got to, we've got to, certainly got to make some change because we need to get a result out of this and uh, uh, we certainly need at least one goal um, if only to keep the delights of extra time and penalties looming so teams coming back out I think the one player actually coming across the sidelines here is Jordan Gabriel the right back for uh, Blackpool just taking some last second instructions perhaps looking at what Gillingham are doing down their left hand side in the second period so uh, online commentary as I said of, via the BBC Sport website and app of our two uh, non-league teams in the FA Cup first round Mayton at Solihull and Tunbridge at home to Harbour Town but here on FM on DAB online free view page 7 1 11 and uh, on BBC Sounds this afternoon. It's Gillingham nil, Blackpool 1 at half-time. Referee checks the two sides, about to get underway. Your commentary team beside me, Peter Lloyd and firstly Ben Watts. Thank you very much, Matt. Yeah, we're up and running then for the second half. Jill's attacking the Rainham end in it. And they go back to Glenn Morris straight away from the kick-off and drive the ball forward towards Tim Dieng, headed away by Blackpool and out of play for an early Jill's throw, which is taken quickly. Williams and Hutton. I'm not sure all the patrons have made it back to their seats in the rainer end. It, um, it seems quite relatively sparsely populated compared to the first half. But uh, um, hopefully we can get a get a little bit of momentum and get the crowd involved in the game and and, and you know get a chance to, to sort of get that 12th player involved. Jaden Clark very much still playing as a, a left wing back, receiving the ball from Shadow Geek. Jills with Glenn Morris between the sticks. Mayor Hutton at the moment high up as the right wing back on the right hand side and controls on his chest that clearance away from Glenn Morris. Ewan Williams sweeps the ball onto Shadow Gear. Now Jaden Clark has it on the left hand side but being put under pressure by Gabriel. And then Embleton likewise with Ogie so they go back to Morris. So Morris the goalkeeper, Ogie, Ema, Marson the three centre halves, Hutton and Clark the wing backs. Ewan Williams playing as the deepest of the midfield players. Wani Little and Tim Dieng in front of him with Jack Nolan supporting Jacob Wakeling in attack. Here's Williams inside the centre circle, the former Chana Charlton Athletic youngster. Born in Bexley Heath. And Jaden Clark from the left-hand side into Max Ema. 4-4-2 for Blackpool, who are sitting in behind this at the moment. It just seems that Jaden Clark, you know, the position he's receiving the ball for the most part, it's, it's all a little bit cautious and he's having to get his back facing his own goal. We want him getting further up the pitch. That was better from Clark. Just tucked himself inside the fullback there and received that long ball four from Ogie. Knocked on by Ewan Williams up towards Nolan, but crowded out by men in Tangerine Orange. And Blackball have it back. Their goalkeeper, Richard O'Donnell, in front of him, a fire. And Casey, the centre halves, Gabriel and Coulson, the left back. Evans and Finnegan in central midfield with Embleton right. Goal scorer, Carey left. Joseph up front with Ballard but Jill's have it back little ahead of Jordan Jaden Clark rather and the challenge comes in 
from Joseph, who was tracking back the centre forward to help out his team defensively and has conceded a corner. Spared his own blushes. I think it's a horrendous pass. Ten quickly. Jules goes short. Jaden Clark inside the box. You and Williams will hook it towards the back stick. Masterson's header. The offside flag has gone up against Jacob Wakeling, in fact, who had kept the ball alive. Right idea from Jules, but in the end, I think the the you and Williams ball in towards the back post was too much on it just seeing Ethan Coleman and Elliot Nevitt two of the injured Jules players wander back towards the uh, dugout or to sit behind it at least along with a couple of the substitutes oh, Bradley Dax there as well yes. so uh, Jules hoping a few of those might be on the pitch with the first team in the weeks to come as they try and get the squad back to full fitness as, as are probably most of the teams in uh, the league hoping that you know, people have all got their, their injury issues but uh, that, that corner you know, was quite a smart move, but then we didn't seem to get set ourselves as to what it was we were trying to do with it, and the uh, the, the poor cross from Williams was uh, was a poor one. Nice from you and Williams this time to receive the ball on the half turn and then switch the play out towards the right-hand side. Tim Dien controls the ball forward, then loses out. Now Blackpool flood over the halfway line. Embleton with a little flick. Here's Joseph. A little mobile in attack, this young group. Here's Gabriel down the right hand side Joseph coming out towards the right little one two again with Embleton helps it on towards Carey the goal scorer good physicality from Shadogi Jules will get a free kick we've got a goal in our feature game Solihull against Maidstone which way is the first goal of the game gone in the FA Cup tie Matt Gerrard it's Solihull one Maidstone United nil Maidstone started the second half pretty brightly by having a couple of attacks the cross came in from the right hand side Headed down by Gale, the striker. Good save by uh, the keeper, Alexei Andre Jr. Got back up, saved it again. But there was James Clark, the big centre half. Two yards out, smashes the ball home. 51 gone. Solihull 1, Maidstone 0. Matt, uh, thank you very much. Uh, bad news for all our sides then. All a goal to nil behind in the FA Cup first round. Jill's here against Blackpool. 49 minutes gone on BBC Radio Kent Sports. Our FA Cup first round special hoping for all our sides to come back from behind and win these first round ties here at Jill's your commentary team Peter Lloyd and firstly Ben Watts yeah so all of a sudden we're thinking about extra time and penalties this might be a good thing that's nice play from Ewan Williams again Armani Little helps it onto the left hand side Jaden Clark's low crossing towards the penalty area and Wakeling was arriving in case he had to be smart the centre half to clear that out into the rain and for a corner yeah better play incisive Early cross, trying to get across the front post, not to get into a physical battle. Defenders done well to get there first and clear it, but suddenly it increases the volume, put a little bit of pressure on the uh, the visitors' goal, and uh, just gets a bit, little bit of momentum for Jules. Everyone back for Blackpool this time. As Little curls it in towards the middle, away by Casey again. His centre half, Ewan Williams will go and retrieve it and take the throw quickly. For Romeo Hutton to potentially load it forward. Blackpool back in their shape. Jules, a couple of players are still loitering in an attacking sense. As Dien controls the fired ball forward from Hutton. Nolan now switches it into the middle. Ema's stayed up. Controls it on his chest, the German. On the edge of the box, Max Ema. It might come down here for Ewan Williams. On his right foot, he goes into trouble. Might come down for Armani Little. Another challenge goes in. The Rainer men just wanted Jules to get a shot off there. And Williams and Little between them. Both tried to fashion cuter chances on their right side. Yeah, I think it was... Uh, you just wanted there someone take uh, responsibility perhaps to have a pop. That's what the crowd wanted. But just a bit of momentum for Jules. Nice little move between Clark and Ewan Williams and Nolan. Jules just trying to pop the ball around with a little bit more intensity. And they go out towards the right-hand side. Hutton knocks it forward over the head of Dieng and of the left-back. And the ball will go out of play for a yeah, goal a kick to Blackpool just at half-time in the rugby, by the way, at Twickenham, England 12, New Zealand 14 at the break. The All Blacks ahead by two points. Yeah, certainly. That was, that was a very difficult skill that Hutton was in, trying there to get the ball forward to Dieng. Um, I guess a few dilemmas for the for the manager. Um, you know, has, uh, is it possible for, for Nolan to get a bit more influential? He, a couple of times he's asking for the ball. I think, yeah, we, if he's going to play there, we need to get it to him. Blackpool coming forward again. Ewan Williams almost nicked it. Hutton just about flicks that out for a throw. And, and I guess equally, some choices about the, the forward positions with uh, uh, Wakeley. Finally, it's difficult to get much joy and much change out of these centre-backs. 
And there are plenty of options on the bench for Mark Bonner. Nine subs, two goalkeepers. We're well prepared, aren't we, for the uh, almost all eventualities. Blackpool have it with Lee Evans, the captain, dropping him between the two centre halves just to knock the ball ahead of a fire. He's now driving forward over the halfway line, the Brighton Loney. Embleton now off his flank on, on the left foot, trying to dink this forward, headed away by Tim Dien. Good defensive recovery run from the Frenchman. Of course, scored in the, the victory over Charlton last season. And Stills made their way to round three. On the left-hand side now, Blackpool, who lead this game by a goal to nil. We're in the 54th minute of this FA Cup tie here on BBC Radio Kent. Little nicks it. Nolan will now try and bring the ball forward. Wakeling ahead of him. Slides the ball forward for Jacob Wakeling to chase after. Into the penalty area. Wakeling's looked to put in a cross there. There was no men in blue inside the box. And the best case scenario was the one he got. A I corner. Think, absolutely right. I think he's done as much as he possibly can there, Wakeling. The, the pass from Little... Gave him no chance of taking a direct shot on himself. Um, and uh, in that situation, you know there's no one alongside you. There's no one within 20 yards of supporting you. Um, and uh, just get off the first man, get the corner. And again, just get the crowd involved. So little to take this corner. Hoagie wrestling at the back post. Ema's in there as well. Cleared away towards the edge of the box. Might come down here for... Hutton to knock it back in after Nolan's little touch, but over hit on the half volley. Jaden Clark was chasing it, but the ball out of play for a goal kick. Yeah, it's a pity there, he's just not quite decisive enough. When the, when the ball's been half cleared, Nolan not making his mind up what he was he wanted to do, and then the uh, for Hutton really, he's just knocked it forward into a space rather than picking a teammate out and. Uh, a, a potentially attacking position uh, dissipates the way, unfortunately. Jill's fans behind the goal, not happy with how long Richard O'Donnell is taking over this goal kick. Lined it up short, went long, headed away by Shadogi. Jaden Clark keeps it in play on this left hand side, gives up the line for Little, tries to give it back to him. There's Jordan Gabriel. Blackpool now firing up towards Ballard. Embleton plays it in behind. Ballard controlled it rather than letting it run he's got the pace to do so now attacking the penalty area Ogie gets back Ballard still going looking for teammates attempted pass into the box from Evans is cut out by Jules who in the end got numbers back there and defended it pretty well yeah certainly uh, a couple of decent passes threatened to open Jules up but uh, we got the bodies back to make sure we dealt with it uh, but uh, Blackpool yeah, Jules had a couple of territorially threatening positions uh, without causing anything to great danger for the goalkeeper uh, Blackpool I'm sure looking just to try and calm things down and get their foot on the ball and, and pass the ball around again uh, I'm sure they realise if they were to get the second goal in this game it would be a very very long way back for Jules from our own point of view maybe playing for that, that one goal that uh, could extend the afternoon and their involvement in the cup Dieng there a moment ago filling in almost at right back and a couple of headers away. The Blackpool right back. Jordan Gabriel trying to knock it forward. Ogie goes down. Was tripped by Ballard. So free kick to Gillingham. Which is taken quickly by Williams. Back towards Morris. 55 gone. Still Gillingham nil. Blackpool one. Still Tunbridge Angels trailing at home to Harbour Town by a goal to nil on our online commentary. Solihull Moors 1, Maidstone United 0. So all the Kent clubs at the moment going out of the FA Cup as Little tries a crossfield ball, which wasn't really on. Fortunately, the goal scorer, Sonny Kerry, didn't control it and Dieng brings it away. Hutton, big crossfield pass on if he wanted it for Clark, goes up the line instead to try and play Wakeling in behind. Casey goes back to his goalkeeper as he secures the ball. Yeah, pleased to see Little apologising to his teammates. That was, a, that was a horrid pass, a blind one across his own box. Um, but he was just finding it difficult to be incisive. Tidy from Ewan Williams. Driving forward now, Nolan. Left footed shot was on. He smashed it into a fire. Blocks the effort. Comes back now to Ewan Williams. Good little link up play between Williams and Nolan in those central areas. Tidy from the base of midfield. Nice from Hutton to get away from his man. Tried to slide it in behind for Masterson, in fact. Good roam forward. Outrageous. Jules have a throw outrageous feet from Hutton on the touchline and surely long far opportunity Blackpool looking to to get players out of the box they've got four players out of the penalty area here 
So Shadow, he stays at home along with Ewan Williams, Little, Jaden Clark, Max Ema goes forward, Dieng, and uh, Ema the targets. Nolan comes short, gives it back to Hutton. Nolan from a deeper area, left foot, fires it in towards the near post. It might come down for Armani Little to shoot towards goal. In fact, it's hit him Dieng and gone out of play for a goal kick. Oh, that's a pity. Yeah, the Blackpool goalkeeper wondering how Little was able to get such a free shot off inside the box. Yeah, certainly, yeah. Jill's getting the ball into the danger area, second ball falling nicely, but uh, um, it's, it's one of those ones that if you strike it and it goes goes past the first man, you never know, uh, but uh, not to be. And uh, a, a slightly soft free kick for Blackpool on the edge of their own box, um, but you can see why the referee's given it. It's the challenges from the long side. So O'Donnell has it. And the goalkeeper for Blackpool as we approach the hour mark. The fire knocks it forward. Looking for Joseph. Comes off the head of Ogi. Ema forward to Ewan Williams. Masters it. Finds Hutton. Williams fires it forward up towards Dieng. Ewan Williams gets it back and then pops it forward. Looking for Jacob Wakely. Headed away by Gabriel. Blackpool clear, Little under pressure, forced the mistake, Nolan picks it up from the Ogi drive, pass forward, Little back to Williams, just a little bit of control in the middle of the pitch now for Gilles, with Williams getting on the football. Gilles, you know, we just give ourselves a chance here. Sort of players always just asking for the ball, always looking to take a couple of touches and make the pass, Little gives it to Nolan trying to play it around the corner to Jaden Clark but the fans just appreciate what Jules were trying to do in that moving in the last few minutes applauded by the manager came out of his technical area um, the, the final execution from Nolan was not a great pass gave uh, Jaden Clark no chance of getting on the end of it unfortunately it went out for the goal kick but uh, just enough to, to get the crowd involved and get a little bit of momentum and a uh, bit of atmosphere inside the ground um, must be uh, quite tempting I imagine for the Jules manager to think about uh, the options at his disposal on the bench um, to, uh, to us just give us a little bit more of a presence up front. I think Wakefield's doing his best, but he's, he's just finding it difficult to give us a platform to play from. The physicality from Ogi to win the ball back for Jules. Marston on halfway, gets it back from Tim Dieng. Looks for the diagonal now for Jaden Clark up against Gabriel. Just to Clever little nudge from the defender just to see him off balance and the ball out of play for a goal kick. I know this is the moment ago that the referee, Mr. Colbrook, ran up to the goalkeeper and was very much on him in terms of time wasting. A couple of goals to bring you. Uh, Rochdale have equalised at home to Bromley. Now, Bromley scored twice in the opening three minutes of the game in that FA Cup tie. It's now 2 2 between those two sides and uh, it's Ipswich 1, Leicester City 0 in the uh, Premier League. Leaf Davis with that goal for the Suffolk side here. Uh, giving away a free kick, Gillingham, a goal to nil down, an hour gone in our three feature games in the FA Cup. All our teams are a goal to nil down, looking to come back, maybe for extra time, maybe for penalties, hopefully uh, for victories. Uh, Mason at Solihull Moors, Tunbridge are at home to Harborough Town. Those two games via the BBC Sport website and app for commentary reports though and goal updates coming into this game. Gillingham available on FM, DAB, on Freeview 711 and indeed on BBC Sounds today. The commentary team on BBC Radio Ken Sports Hub, Peter Lloyd and Firstly Ben Watts. Oki's head up, ball forward from Ewan Williams, finds Armani Little on this left-hand side, a fire penalised. Just went too tight there, didn't that, that's, that's a really careless one. Too tight, too early. Fire at the moment ago, won a free kick off Ogie, and I think any other player on the pitch would have been slammed into the advertising hoarding, I, but a fire just stood and took it. I, I just wondered there that it looked for a moment as though Ogie was really committed to closing the space quickly, and I thought if he goes off his feet here, this could, could get very horrid. But uh, just a bit of discretion was about a part of Valor at the last moment and just body checked him instead. But Jules free kick about 35 yards from goal left flank. Curled in by Nolan, deep towards the back post, over everyone's head. Dieng was closest to it, Blackpool clear it away, Ballard putting Hutton under a bit of pressure here, it's been fired back towards Glenn Morris, who's controlled it brilliantly on the volley. And now Jules try and play it forward, that's a cute oh. touch from Maxima, who's now slid this into the path of Wakeling, who's got in behind, can he turn this around the corner to Jaden Clark, good physicality from our fire again, good strength from him, 
Now Blackpool look to come forward the other way. Evans firing a quick ball forward, which Glenn Morris comes and grabs. Well, I think it's all aboard the showboat there. Keeper controlling a volleyed pass and laying it off nicely. And then Maxine with a death flick from the outside of the foot. Um, albeit a miss in her own half. Um, but uh, again, hopefully people can hear a bit of atmosphere. I mean, I mean, trying to get involved in the game. Realise it's not going to be easy. But as we enter the, uh, the last half an hour still, you know, it, it's not beyond us. Nolan can't quite find a teammate. So Blackpool with a fire, knock it up the line. Evans and Embleton and Ballard combine and then Embleton with a little bit of room. Ballard making the run in behind Joseph likewise. Carey an option on the left side. Blackpool looking to add a second here. Carey around the corner to Embleton. Just lets it run a little bit too far and Jules are able to get men back in key defensive positions. Blackpool still have the football and still lead the game by a goal to nil as well. We'll be on the hour mark here at Breezefield on BBC Radio Kent's Sports Hub. This FA Cup first round tie at Breezefield. Finnegan lays it off. Kerry dancing his way forward and wins a corner as well. You'd have to say that uh, there was some real quality in a tight space down in front of us almost on the halfway line. Lovely touches to create an opportunity to move forward. You know, plenty of moving off the ball. Uh, some deft touches again further in that attack. Um, in the end, the cross was pretty comfortably dealt with, albeit at the expense of a corner. But uh, certainly that uh, is, is not the sort of stuff we tend to see every day in League Two. Blackpool to take the corner then, right-footed. Big swinger towards the back post. There was some pushing inside the box. Free kick to Gills. We have to go to Longmead, a second goal of the game in that one. But is it Tunbridge back in the tie against Harborough Town? Or are the away team taking a further lead? Matt Eastley. It's the proverbial mountain to climb for Tunbridge Angels now because Harbour Town have gone 2-0 up. Ben Stevens, the top scorer, was played through and he finished beautifully past Matt Rowley. It's Tunbridge Angels nil, Harbour Town 2. As Matt is saying, has a long way to come back. 64 minutes scored in this game. Gillingham a goal to nil down and uh, Mason still a goal to nil down at Solihull Moors as well. Let's hope all our sides. Big comebacks we're hoping for. Grandstand finishes on the sports hub. Uh, ben Watson, Peter Lloyd. Oh, it's controlled by Jack Nolan. You have to say, up until that passage of play, Peter Lloyd, and Blackpool had a little bit of joy. Jules feels like making their presence felt a little bit more in this game Ogie's looking particularly bullish and driving forward down the left hand side free kick to Gillingham as well seeing them just tick things over in midfield a little bit more seeing Little and Williams on the ball just feels like they're growing into this game a little bit more in the second half Jules fired out towards the right hand side by Ewan Williams headed up the line by Hutton Dieng controls it wants a little bit of help here Tim Dieng and has to go all the way back to Marston on the halfway line yes that's how how difficult I think is that we, at the moment, we haven't got players that are going, winning their individual is going past their opponent. Okay. And that makes it difficult. Here's Jaden Clark. Can he do so? Gives it infield to Jack Nolan. Little. Back to Nolan. Left side of the box. Tries to fire it in towards Wakeling. Got a toe on it. Defender clears. Ewan Williams, though, wins the ball back. Jaden Clark on side, trying to turn away from his man, trying to dance into the box. Challenge comes in, a fire away. Bit of pressure for Jules. Looking to recycle it. Jaden Clark back to Armani Little. Ewan Williams. Oh, has to be careful in that kind of pit area of the pitch when he's turning and taking an extra touch, but Little Gear to help him out. Some nice touches there in a tight space, particularly Williams and Little. Masterson has it back. Jules at the back with the ball. Ema. Dieng just dropping in, Hutton ahead of it. Likewise, Nolan. This is this is where there, there isn't quite the incisiveness at the moment, and whether that means we get players like Little involved and on the ball. Um, if not, but Jules just just getting a little bit uh, of, of joy. That's better. Little with a couple of touches. Jaden Clark driving forward and in towards the edge of the box. Jaden Clark still going. Can he size up a shot? Hutton shoots. It's blocked. It was a good combination play, a little punch forward from Ogie up towards Little and then that one-two with Jaden Clark just to spark Jules into life. That was good stuff from Clark. Took players on, went past players. Ogie now left side. Jack Nolan has come across. Little. Fires it out towards Ewan Williams, who's 
filling in at right back. Everyone else is roaming forward at the moment for Gilles. So they go back towards Morris. As Joe Bode looks like he's going to be coming on to try and be such a, a player as well for Gillingham Sioux. Yeah, Joe Tart just blowing a bit there. He's taking quite a while to come back to his position. Jordan Rhodes and Jake Beasley as well being prepared for black paws. It's played up towards Wakeling and controls it on his chest and finds Little. He helps it on towards Jaden Clark. Edge of the box, Clark back towards Little. Left foot tries to cross towards the back stick. Too easy in the end for the goalkeeper. I don't think anyone needs to tell Amara Little that was a horrid cross. Dollied up for the keeper, a bit of catching practice. Premier League goal gone in, Bournemouth 2, Manchester City nil. Evan Nielsen, Evan Nielsen rather, doubling the lead uh, for the Cherries at home. Crikey, shall we, uh, shall we pass the hat round, whip round for City, perhaps for at least for a few last the pass, if nothing else. So, any more shocks on the cards, any reversals on the cards, are three Kent sides behind in the FA Cup first round Tunbridge by two goals Maidstone and Jules by a single goal <laughs> Maxima almost gets taken out by Glenn Morris's clearance which the veteran keeper finds extremely funny sharing a bit of a joke at the moment as Ogie fires the ball forward looking for Wakeling that'll go out of play so this might provoke the substitutions yeah I think we can have a very tall tsunami of them certainly uh, from Jules' point of view Looks like just the one with uh, Bode. I think uh, the fourth official's just about worked out his bingo numbers. Bode four. I wonder if it'll be Jordan, it'll be Jaden Clark. No, it's Tim Dieng. Tim Dieng just so whether that's uh, feeling something possibly, just a little grimace on his face as he kind of walked off. See quite how that uh, surely leads to a formation change. Pans out and a double change at the moment by looks of it. It says something about uh, the sort of players that uh, our opponents can bring on. This, uh, this chap Rhodes. Yeah, just the 245 career goals as he replaces, in fact, Beasley replaces Ballard. I think they made a bit of a mess of the, uh, the numbers here. And it's going to be Joseph coming off, I think, for Rhodes. So it is yeah. the front two. Carl Joseph and Don Ballard off. Beasley and Rhodes on to replace them. Yeah, I think you said Saint knows what it's about, but uh, maybe not quite as mobile. So uh, perhaps a slightly different threat for uh, the dual central defenders. Second goal for Nottingham Forest, by the way. Callum Hudson Adoy on 65 minutes. It's uh, Nottingham Forest 2, West Ham 0 now. From Jules' point of view, looks very much they like were keeping the shape with the three centre backs, but Bode would appear to be playing as a the second striker centrally with Wakeling so uh, um, just changes the midfield shape a little bit ball played up towards Jordan Rhodes back towards Gabriel tries to flick it around the corner here Rhodes through on the goalkeeper and Glenn Morris equally if not more experienced than the veteran forward pulls out a big stave stayed on his feet and blocked it with his chest yeah certainly there no, no suggestion at all that he was offside Timed his run very well. Um, in the end, put it at a nice height for the Jules keeper. We've still got to make the save. And how important could that prove to be with 20 minutes to go? From the corner then, Evans to curl in and away, swing a four black ball. In towards the penalty area, headed on and off Ogie and it's cleared off the line. Has it gone in? The linesman says corner. And Jacob Wakeling has kept Jules in the cup tight. Well, it was a um, it was a way swing out. The man's come to the near post area to get a little flick across goal. Looks as though he's hit Ogie and, and, and Wakeling certainly. That was definitely going in. I think uh, just was well in nine. Looked to have close one. Here comes corner. And towards the near post and it's Wakeling there again to head it away. Comes back in from Carey. Evans helps it on in towards the box. Flicked on. There's Rhodes at the near post. Good defending by Masterson. Out of play for a, a Blackpool corner. Yeah, all of a sudden Blackpool have found another gear. Um, and uh, that man Rhodes has been pretty instrumental in all of that. Yeah, he's only been on the pitch a matter of minutes and he's causing the Jills back line some issues. Yeah, we've, uh, as I said, we've just under 20 minutes to go. There's still plenty of time. We've just got to ride out this bit of pressure. And uh, hopefully we can get a bit of momentum again going forward. 
So, crossed in towards the box from that corner in towards the back post. It's beyond everyone and it's out of the play for a goal kick. So, 17 minutes to go of normal time. Plus stoppages for Jules to try and find an equaliser in the game. Yeah, got two balls on the pitch, unfortunately. But uh, enthusiastically got the ball back into play after that uh, pretty wayward corner from the visitors. Um, so Jules, still time here. Um, interesting to see how Bode will uh, certainly perhaps be a bit more of a physical presence. He's winning this flick on. But he's going to take Dieng's role in the sense that if we're going to play the ball from back to front, he's the one who probably is going to have to compete for the first header. Little means he's playing a little bit more centrally now with Dieng off the field. Nolan maybe slightly deeper as well. Hoki back to Morris, clears it forward. Up towards Wakeling, a fire wins the header. Forward by Ewan Williams. Shepherded out by Gabriel. Yeah, I think certainly Wakeling is uh, finding it very difficult in the air to uh, to be competitive. At what point does Josh Andrews perhaps become a consideration? We got him and Hawkins. I think that's the yeah you know, the options are potentially there, but uh, as it is, you know maybe that's a the last of our um, from a Jules point of view to uh, perhaps bring those players on. Got to make sure they're in the game when that opportunity arises. It's off Ogie, now to play for a throw-in. Yeah, they quite cutely worked the line here, Blackpool. Gabriel's throw-in, Embleton's attempted flick, Ewan Williams blocks it. Amani Little spreads the play out towards the right-hand side and Romeo Hutton under a little bit of pressure here from Sonny Carey. Does well to go back to his goalkeeper. Clearance from Morris is helped on by Ewan Williams. Around the corner by Little, nice turn by Nolan. Bit of room right hand side now for Romeo Hutton. Comes in field. Hutton pokes the ball forward. Jaden Clark controls it. Left side of the box. Back to Little. Back to the left winger, Jaden Clark. Taking on his man. Can he get a ball in? It's blocked by Gabriel. Comes back to Little. He crosses in towards the back post. Bode was arriving. It was headed away by Coulson, though. And now Blackpool looks to try and counter-attack themselves. Sonny Carey just pausing for the moment before firing it forward up towards Beasley and it's very easy for Glenn Morris. In the end, there was a poor ball forward and just uh, just gives the, uh, the crowd a little bit of encouragement. He's in lots of space for Jaden Clark. Ewan Williams picks him out with a crossfield ball. Jaden Clark charges at Gabriel. Challenge comes in on Jaden Clark. Out of play for a corner. Yeah, just to uh, get the crowd involved. It was a fabulous crossfield ball from Williams. And Jaden Clark just got his head down, really, and drove into the space. Um, defender did his best to try and stop going out for the corner, but Jules just getting a bit of momentum. Another 15 minutes yet in this game. Could yet be a, a grandstand finish. And supporters in the rain amends look to cheer Jules on and drive them forward. Little with the corner goes back post. Masterson was arriving. I think him and Bode ended up kind of getting in each other's way in the end, and it's out of play for a goal kick. And we're back to Longmead. There's the third goal in the, Kef the cup tie between Tunbridge and Harborough. Are Angels back in this, or are Harborough stretching their lead? Matt Eastley. The la it's the latter, Matt. Harbour Town have gone 3-0 up. Surely the dream is over now for Tunbridge Angels. Ben Stevens' his second goal of the game. It was a mistake by uh, Jamie Fielding. Stevens uh, drew uh, Rowley to him and finished with a plum to make it Tunbridge Angels nil, Harbour Town 3. And maybe the dream is over of making history, for the making the second round for the first time, unless they do something extraordinary now. Maidstone still trailing Solihull by a goal to nil away from home. And Gillingham trailing uh, Blackpool by a goal to nil. But coming back into it, it feels like in this second second half Ben Watson Peter Lloyd here on BBC Radio Kent Sports Hub yeah it just feels like if Jules could get a goal we've got a real humdinger of a cup tie on our hands all of a sudden as Ogie plays it forward little cute flick on from Wakeling away by a fire there's a flag that's gone up for an offside I think against Bode yeah, it's so it'll be a defensive free kick rather than the throw yeah not uh, the smartest Unfortunately, on that occasion from Bode. Just to tell you, Liverpool have scored two quick goals against Brighton, by the way. It's Gakpo and Salah that now have them ahead at Hanfield by two goals to one. 
Marcus Wiley is the man that's being prepped by Jules rather than an Andrew Zora Hawkins that we were talking about. It's Wiley who is... You have to assume that'll be a straight swap. Ready to come on, presumably for Wakeling. Glenn Morris comes to the edge of his box to gather the ball. That's a yellow card all day long. Goal scorer Sonny Carey blocked off the attempted quick throw from the Jules goalkeeper. Yeah, I think he, uh, he knew exactly what he was doing there, didn't he? Shadogi then, as Jules do then get a chance to come out from the back. 77th minute. Blackpool lead this game here at Priestville by a goal to nil on BBC Radio Kent. We're on BBC Sounds, DAB and FM. Online commentaries of the Maidstone and Tunbridge games. Maidstone just one goal down at Solihull Moors. One goal down, Jules here. You just wonder that, uh, um, you know, Jules looking to still try and pass and develop through the, uh, the thirds, if you like. Um, there must be a temptation to, uh, to bring on some big guys and just go back to front and play for the bits and pieces. Glenn Morris forward. Looking for Bowday. Does well to hold off his man. Finds Hutton on the right. Nolan ahead of him. Hutton still looking to try and bring it forward. That's a nice touch from Bowday. Unfortunately, we need Bowday probably in the centre. Goes back to Hutton. Deep cross towards the back stick. Armani Little trying to control it out of the sky. Clearance away is by Gabriel. So we're at 11 minutes to go. Looks like the uh, Jules going to make... Uh, Another change here. Connor Masterson's coming off for Marcus Wiley. Well, yes, uh, that has to be a change of shape. And let's say we don't know about Marcus Wiley. Um, I think uh, Jules will go to a four. Bode's going to go to the right. Wiley will come down the middle with Wakeling. So, but this, this would presumably mean, unless we, we get completely unbalanced, that uh, Jaden Clark will be the, will be the left back now. But yeah, uh, unless yours is going to go to kind of more of a long three, trial opportunity three, four, for three type thing. Okay, anyway. Ogie's throw. Jack Nolan is in a bit of room on the edge of the box and shoots towards goal, and it was a fairly straightforward one in the end for the goalkeeper. Well, that's. I mean, I suppose there's a telling stat as we've just approached the last ten minutes. Is that's only the second shot on target the Jules have had. They both come from Nolan. That one from 25 yards plus, pretty comfortable. And there was one low down to the keeper's left, which he fumbled a bit just before half time. Um, so it's uh, again, you know, for, for a lot of industry, finding it very difficult to make clear cut opportunities. Yeah, like you say, Jaden Clark looks like he's effectively the left back now for Chills as Ewan Williams knocks it forward and looks for Wiley. Oh, it was a decent first touch from Wiley, but then he stopped and allowed Casey to get a challenge in. He clears for Blackpool. So, Jules now with Ema and Ogie as the two centre halves. Jaden Clark, common normally playing as the left back. Nobody's really playing there. Little's knocked it forward. Away by a fire. This is where they need to be careful, Jules, in this kind of transition moment. Ogie comes across. There's a cute touch. Nobody really read it. What an absolute comedy of errors from both teams. Given away by Blackpool. Ewan Williams fires it forward. Jaden Clark comes forward with it. Wakeling made the run too late almost Clark was driving forward and then he played it behind Wakeley goodness me a, a, a very a very, oh, very orderly passage of play here goodness me Little gives the ball away as he tries to pick out Nolan and Carey drives forward he runs straight into Hutton Bode then over the halfway line Wiley ahead of him into the right channel Marcus Wiley squares it to Nolan back to Hutton Swings a deep cross towards the penalty area. It's over the head of Wakeling. They'll come all the way through here to Jaden Clark. Little available. Armani Little might look to cross. Puts it in towards the middle. It's come off a fire. Should be a corner to Gillingham. Yeah, Jill's uh, not finding it easy to make chances, but just getting a bit of territory and just getting the crowd involved. And you wonder if we'll set play where we can load some other big guys in there. Whether this is the... Uh, the way forward for us. If we could find an equaliser now, could make for a much interesting last 10 minutes, if, if it would then even be the last 10 minutes. Nolan to take it. Well, if Jules can score, it won't be. Armani Little's in acres of room in the edge of the penalty box. He gets given it by Nolan. Now chips it towards the back post. Straight to the goalkeeper, though, at the near. 
It was the right idea, though, because Little had been left in so much room. Changed the angle of it, but the Nolan ball in didn't have the required quality. No, that's, that's very disappointing. Having made the decision to go short, just changed the angle, and, and he's, he'll know. He's got a better ball in than that. It's almost as if Hutton's playing as the right-sided centre-half now, with Bode and Clark staying very high as the wide men. It's, uh, it's a bit total football at the moment from Jills, if I may say so. We're uh, a little bit all over the place. So here's Hutton on the right. Nolan's made the run, Wakeling's made the run in behind as well. Might get there, Casey, as he flicked that onto his own hand. I think that's absolutely the right decision. He may well have done, but I think he's, he's, he's looking to clear it. He's kicked it up totally accidentally. Um, and uh, I think that would have been, uh, well, would love to have been given, but I think it would be ultra, ultra harsh. Change for the uh, visitors by the looks of things, pretty imminently. Yeah, Pennington about to come on. Another centre half. A couple of goals to tell you about. Uh, Rochdale have got a third against Bromley. Bromley were 2 0 up at uh, Rochdale in the first three minutes of the game. It's now 3 2 to Rochdale in that FA Cup tie. So Bromley on the verge of going out themselves. Man City got a goal back at Bournemouth. Uh, Gvardiol with that one. It's Bournemouth 2, Man City 1. Gillingham a goal to nil down here, hoping for something in the last seven minutes plus stoppage time to get themselves back into this game. Nottingham Forest, meanwhile, go 3 0 up at home to West Ham United. So, Embleton coming off for Pennington, which might provoke a change in shape for Blackpool, unless Pennington's going to go to right back and Gabriel just push up into midfield. The, the play applause is not for the substitution. It's in recognition of the 213, 213 hardy souls that have travelled from probably various points of the compass, but primarily from northwest of England to cheer on Blackpool in a crowd of 4,403, which is... Uh, Compared to some recent uh, FA Cup attendances in the early rounds, it's not too bad a crowd at all. So yeah, Gabriel's pushed up into midfield. A fire's now gone to right back and Pennington slotted in at centre half. So Blackpool almost reinforcing their defence as Nolan trying to nick it back off. Coulson, clearance away by the goalkeeper. It's come off Clark. It might come down here for Nolan. He's trying to drive this forward in front of Wiley inside the penalty area. He tries to cut it back towards Wakeling at the back stick wasn't really kind of set for it Wakeling as it was drilled across and Blackpool were able to clear knocked forward surely Rhodes was offside Linesman allows play to go on as Jules have it yeah, poor clearance from the keeper just gave Jules a half a chance there but uh, the low ball didn't pick out Wakeling at the back post unfortunately Shadogi fires it forward Nobody really offering for him. Knocked for by Evans. Beasley will compete with Ogie. Ewan Williams does well to knock it back to the goalkeeper. I think the advantage will be played for Gillingham. Yeah, I think a uh, bit of a shove back on, on Williams, but uh, Jules. Well, we're getting to the last five minutes. It's, uh, we're still looking to try and pass the ball. Oh, Ewan Williams almost robbed of the ball. And then plays the crossfield pass for Jaden Clark. Wiley ahead of him, little square. Big crossfield ball on for Bode, which is going to be a difficult one for Bode to get there. Managed to stop it from going out for a goal kick at least. Instead, it's a, a throw in in the Blackpool left back area. Yeah, unfortunately, there for Jules. Um, it, it was a very ambitious ball from, uh, from Little. Just asked a bit too much of Bode, who did remarkably well to stop it going out for the goal kick. Um, we've got to hope now, four minutes plus stoppages, that we can just find one moment to uh, keep this tie going. Blackpool managed to clear it up the line. It'll be back with Glenn Morris, 87th minute. Gillingham still just one goal down. That Sonny Kerry finish off the post in the first half for the League One side. Forward by Glenn Morris. Down the middle towards Wakeling, who will look to disrupt rather than probably try and win it. Yeah, that's, I mean, you think that if we do go long, you yeah, know, the focal point for, for any kind of aerial challenge would still look as though it would be Bode. Given away by Blackpool, what was Finnegan doing there? Almost lost his bearings completely. Bode wins a throw. Chills have it on the halfway line then with Maxima. Ogie will walk onto the pass. 
Fired out towards the left-hand side, and it was over here. Basic error. He didn't really. He's, he's apologised there. He didn't give Jaden Clark much chance at all. Uh, just uh, takes any momentum out of the situation. Just under three minutes to go, plus stoppages. Well, here comes Josh Andrews. I just he's, wonder. He's, it's it's uh, certainly been left very late to bring him on. Yeah, I think uh, looks like it's going to be a change for both sides, but at this rate, it's going to be a matter of a few seconds. To, to just get a throw in, admittedly, mid range side of our own half here, and uh, it's going to be a real last hurrah with Josh Andrews. Yeah, Onama coming on for Blackpool in a moment as well. He's in a moment, I think we've got uh, just a fraction over two minutes to go. Ball played forward up towards Wakeling. He does well to compete with his man. There's a foul being given, though, on the left back by the linesman over on the far side. So Andrews presumably will replace Wakeling. There we go, two minutes to go. Change for each side. And uh, looks like Josh Andrews will be the first to come on. One assumes it will be for Wakeling eventually. We should quickly break four goals in both our other FA Cup ties. Let's go to Solihull Moors against Maidstone first. Us have Stones tied it up, Matt Gerrard. No, it's 2 0 now. Solihull 2, Maidstone 0. Penalty scored by their leading goal scorer, Jack Stevens. The uh, Madu Poku, the former Maidstone lonely, he went on an amazing run. He slipped over, caused chaos inside the penalty area. Stevens was brought down and he picked himself up to slot the ball past the goalkeeper Maystone's FA Cup dream is over got five minutes of stoppage time they need to score two Solly hold two Maystone nil and Tunbridge got something at home to Harborough Matt Easley no Matt absolute horror show here at Longmead Tunbridge Angels nil Harbour Town four O'Sullivan broke through the uh, Tunbridge defence played in Dan Forbes as substitute he slotted past uh, Matt Rowley absolute horror show here at Longmead Tunbridge Angels nil Harbour Town four so our main hope now of uh, a representative in the second round of the FA Cup seems to be Gillingham. We've got one minute plus stoppages here. Training by Goldstein against League One Blackpool. Ben Watson, Peter Lloyd to take you through the final moments. So Jack Nolan was the man we've drawn. So Andrew's on for him, meaning Wakeling just dropping in a little bit deeper. Blackpool have got a throw in on the left hand side, which has been headed away by Max Ema. Jules looked to try and clear through Ewan Williams, but he is indeed fouled. And so Jules have a free kick outside their own penalty area, which Glenn Morris presumably fired Andrews. forward towards Josh Andrews. He's the target. He competes in the air for the ball. Comes back down to Armani Little, back to Ogie. He comes the fourth official. Four added minutes. That's all Jules have got left. Ogie wins a free kick, taken quickly. Ema to Romeo Hutton. Bode right hand side. Checks away from his man. Free kick Gillingham. Yeah, At man. what point did Jules just go for the big load into the box? They go short instead. Hutton to Bode. Bode towards the edge of the box. Overruns it. Heavy touch. And the ball out of play for a goal kick just as men were starting to queue up at the back post for Bode. Yeah, he apologises, but... Uh you just wonder that you, you just put a big man on we, we've already got Oki and Ema on the pitch as well is there a time when, when finesse disappears a little bit and you, you put your foot through it and, and stick it into the box uh, and, and just play for the bits and pieces if nothing else um, Josh Andrews certainly an absolute cameo role for him unless the game goes to an extra half an hour Donald the goalkeeper took about as much time as he could afford to over the goal kick Ewan Williams knocks it forward. A fires header away. Ema. Ewan Williams again goes direct up towards Andrews and it comes down for Wakeling here. Jacob Wakeling trying to go all by himself. His shot is blocked by a fire and out of play it goes for a corner. Well, this is uh, almost it, isn't it? We had 90 seconds of the additional four minutes. Everyone back for black ball. Glenn Morris saying about the stars, the centre circle. But uh, could this be the moment? It might need to be for Gillingham in the 92nd minute of four added minutes. One goal down to Blackpool here at Priestfield. Armani Little with the corner and towards the near post. It's headed easily away at the near post. Delivery wasn't quite of the quality. Armani Little recycles towards the back post and he's overhit that as well. Underhit the corner, overhit the cross. And now to play for a goal kick to Blackpool. 
goodness me, you, you have to say that uh, you know if, if Jules could find an equaliser and go on to win the tie, fantastic. But uh, we've 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 just come up a little bit short here, and, and when we've got into some decent positions, the quality of the ball into the box on occasions needs to be perfect because of perhaps how difficult it is for us to win a first header. Um, but uh, that project, I mean, little, you know, that just about sums things up there. The ball was into the box of not giving his teammates much of a chance. Um, and uh, Jules need to uh, to find something fairly spectacular in these closing moments. Yeah, 90 seconds to go. It was lumped long by the Blackpool goalkeeper. Glenn Morris managed to recycle it. Awkward bouncing ball is flicked on by Wiley. Jaden Clark left side. Needs help. Goes up the line to Little. He looks to try and play an early cross in towards Wakeling and it's been cleared by Blackpool and they'll try and come out here. Oh, big on chance on the, the break. break. Looks to try and slide it in. Carey will go through on goal and look to try and add a second, which he does. Blackpool in the cup tie. Gillingham go out. All three Kent clubs out in round one of the FA Cup. As Sonny Carey seals the business on the counter-attack. Gillingham nil. Blackpool two. Game, set and match. Yeah, said to take a bit of a chance. And uh, Blackpool turned possession over. mid range side their own half. Burst forward. And uh, goes in a played in acres of space and he's finished very calmly hasn't really given them as much chance and put it in the far corner and uh, certainly that's well and truly game and tie over unfortunately um, and uh, that's puts a little bit of a gloss on it for Blackpool but from a, a Jules point of view sadly the uh, the winless sequence will continue we knew that tonight, today was going to be a tough one um, you know team playing at a completely different level to, to what we're used to um, but uh, Again, we, we've just found it so difficult to make chances and show quality in the final third. And that's something that we, regardless of who we're playing, that's something that needs to change and, and change quickly. Clearance away by Morris. Downfield for Josh Andrews to flick it on. Marcus Wiley trying to trick his way down the right-hand side for Jules. Blackpool managed to get it away. Now they come forward on another counter-attack here. Carey all by himself on a hat trick into the penalty area might square it wanted to go alone challenge came in from Max Ema now Bode will stretch the ball forward for Jills and fire it up towards Andrews controlled by Andrews under pressure from a fire does well to hold the ball up back towards Little Jills don't quite have the belief or the energy it seems now but Wakeling still going down the left hand side his crossing towards the near post cleared away by Blackpool We've had five minutes of additional time now. Steve Bruce, Tangerine Army is the call. And Blackpool were in the hat for round one. A murmur of booze around Priestfield. I think the disappointment of the result in isolation. The players certainly gave their all in that second half and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Blackpool at times. Caught out on the counter-attack in the late stages after they themselves were trying to press for a, an equaliser. But ultimately, perhaps... The issue on the day, Peter, is one that has been hurting them in the league and in their recent run of defeats. They're just not quite, as they haven't been in many years previous, had that quality in front of goal and that precision in the final passes to, to create those really good quality chances. And as a result, Blackpool have kept them out. Yeah, I think uh, we can have no complaints about the final outcome. Blackpool showed on occasions the quality that uh, they had um, you know, wasn't manifested in, in sense of loads of goal map opportunities for them. The, the second goal has put the icing on the cake for the visitors. If a Jewish point of view, you're spot on. I think that uh, lots of endeavour, a lot of hard work without the ball, but when we did get possession in advanced positions, the quality wasn't there. Uh, Wakefling has, has battled manfully in a bit of a losing battle, dare one say, against the centre backs. Um, and the just slightly tinkering with the formation and, and the, where the players were positioned um, didn't unfortunately unlock the visitors defence um, no great complaints I think the right team have gone through um, from a Jules point of view yeah this isn't deciding our season we've got important league games coming up in the next few weeks none more so than next Saturday when the visitors will be the league leaders um, but uh, we need to just get uh, a rest this slide um, which is which is just getting away from us in, in recent weeks um, after that tremendous start 
but you're absolutely right that I think that ultimately but as has been the case in previous seasons we're still finding it very difficult to make chances and score goals and we've had two shots on target which were both comfortably saved and that's not enough to win football matches Peter, Ben, thank you very much. We'll, of course, get reaction from the Jules camp after this one, the final hour of the Sports Hub. But it does very much look like all three of our teams are out of the FA Cup at first round. We wait full-time reports from the Maidstone and Tunbridge games. Uh, but Gillingham certainly are out, having lost 2-0 at home uh, to uh, Blackpool here. Uh, at uh, Priestfield, so more to come. Uh, Bromley, by the way, meanwhile, looks like an early and late show for the Ravens, having gone 2-0 up in the first three minutes. They were pegged back by the 80th minute to 3-2. They scored twice in injury time. Uh, Levi Amanchi, uh, who scored a lot of goals for Maidstone in their run, uh, early in their part of their run, uh, last season equalised, and then uh, into the fourth minute of stoppage time, Corey Whiteley, who scored the first goal in the first minute, why well have won it uh, with the uh, final goal in the final minute. We'll bring you uh, up to date with the, the final scores of all those games uh, in due course. But certainly an absolute thriller at uh, Rochdale Bromley. Unfortunately, not too thrilling for our side. And I'll take you to Longmead now. Tunbridge Angels at home to Harbour Town. Tunbridge hoping to make history and go through to the second round for the very first time. We were hoping for excitement. We knew the atmosphere would be there. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel like it's gone anywhere near Tunbridge's way. Matt Eastley has the story. Yes, Matt, and to say Tunbridge Angels have fluffed their lines would be an understatement. They've lost here by four goals to one. They're humiliated, embarrassed, I would say, out for and out thought by a side that I would say wanted it more from the Southern Premier Central Harbour Town, who've come here and are rightly celebrating with jubilation of their 400 fans who've come down from Leicestershire. They ca you cannot begrudge them the victory. Tunbridge Angels simply did not do enough to win this cup tie. Fluffing their lines on what is arguably the biggest game in their history. They fell behind on 41 minutes when Paul Malone, they knew about the threat from set pieces. The, one of the biggest sides I've ever seen uh, in, a, in a playing a football match, actually, Harbour Town. But uh, uh, they got their nose ahead on 41 minutes. Paul Malone nodding home a header from uh, from a corner by Walsh. They went into half-time, 1-0. Tunbridge Angels rang the changes. They brought on uh, Robinson to try and stem the tide. They brought on uh, Scott Wagstaff, but it was to no avail. And two goals from Ben Stevens. the first on 60 minutes, the second on 70 minutes. Both goals, very, very similar goals, actually. Almost replicas being played through. Stevens beating the offside trap, drawing Matt Rowley and finishing brilliantly. Then uh, to rub salt in the wounds on uh, 86 minutes, uh, O'Sullivan broke through from uh, from defence, played in the substitute Forbes. Forbes again drew Rowley, finished to the delight of the disbelieving fans from Harbour Town and the stunned silence here of a, a record crowd here at Longmead that is absolutely walking away, stunned here, beaten by Harbour Town from the Southern Premier Central. They did get what was nothing more than a mere consolation when Sean Shields danced through to finish past the excellent Elliot Taylor in goal. Jay Saunders cutting a disconsolate figure as he left the field. The Tunbridge Angels players looking disconsolate, heads down in stark contrast to the scenes of celebration to my right. The yellow shirted Harbour Town fans celebrating with their fans. They've come here, they've humiliated Tunbridge Angels. Tunbridge Angels out of the FA Cup. It finished Tunbridge Angels 1, Harbour Town 4. Not the story we were hoping for, obviously. They're out of the FA Cup and I uh, don't think Maidstone are going through to round two to continue what was a fantastic journey from last season either. Matt Gerrard has been watching them away at Solihull Moors. Yeah, a hat-trick of defeats for Kent sides, unfortunately, Matt. It's finished Solihull Moors 3, Maidstone United nil. Two late goals for Solihull ends this for Maidstone United. But what, I mean, what could have been for Maidstone? Solihull deserved to win this game, maybe not by three goals to nil. But Maystone huffed and puffed, but didn't have that real quality. Quite an um, uh, even first half. So we had a couple of chances, plenty of possession, a couple of free headers at the back post, but maybe they should have got on the end too. One big for chance for Maystone on 43 when George Fowler, um, ball fell to him inside the penalty area. The defender, but he was leaning back, fired it over the crossbar. Second half, Maystone started pretty well, I thought. But then on 49 minutes, the opening goal came for Solihull. Cross came in after a long throw, came back out to uh, Jamie Osborne. His cross came in, headed towards goal by James Gale. Good save by Alexandre Jr. Again, follow-up, he saved it again, but there was James Clark, the centre-half, 
to tap in his first goal of the season. Maystone were appealing for something. Oh, was either offside or maybe a foul for the goalkeeper. But the referee waved play on. Maystone then made a couple of changes to get the ball forward. Again, the ever-dangerous Aaron Blair. But he didn't have too much support. And they had a couple of half chances. Fell to the edge of the penalty area for Seaman. And Krasnicki, when he came on a shot, dragged the shot wide. But really, keeper Laurie Walker didn't have much to do in the Solihull goal. In fact, didn't have a shot to save throughout the game. The game then was Maystone push men forward. Solihull got two quick goals. One from the penalty spot after a mazy run from Adu Pock, who slipped at the wrong moment. Ball fell inside the penalty area. Stevens was brought down and he picked himself up to slot the penalty in for his ninth goal of the season. And again, as Maystone really threw everything at it uh, in the 97th minute, Again, excellent run by Michael Adupoku. He was full of pace to Watford Loney. He was on loan at Maystone last season. He ran down the left-hand side, laid the ball off to Connor Wilkinson, the former Gillingham man. His first touch was to control it. His second one was to draw Alex Andre Jr. to slot the ball in the back of the net. So for Maystone, I think they'll be a little bit frustrated with the performance, not creating too many chances against the Solihull side who you know, had the extra quality in the final third. And that's what's ended this game. And taken Maystone United out. No trips to Ipswich, no trips to Coventry this season. But Maystone will just have to improve in the league and move up that table. No FA Cup run then for Maystone. It's finished here. Solly L3, Maystone nil. Matt, thank you very much indeed. So that's the story from our Kent sides today. Uh, uh, Bromley, I should say, did uh, win 4-3 at Rochdale. Fantastic win for them uh, early and late show, as I was saying. Two goals in the first three minutes for Bromley at Rochdale. But then by 80 minutes, it was 3-2 to Rochdale. Two injury time goals for Bromley winning it. Corey Whiteley with, I think, more or less the first one of the last kicks of the game as well has finally gone to full time. Some teams going to extra time, of course, and penalties for the first time uh, in this FA Cup first round, uh, not for uh, the Kent teams, I'm afraid. It's 5.01 on BBC Radio Kent Sports Hub. The Sports Hub with Matt Cole. BBC Radio Kent. And yes, we wanted to bring you more Cup Magic, a thoughts of a big FA Cup runs to come for maybe one, two, even three of our teams. Unfortunately, not to be. To be. Gillingham held their own for a long periods of time at home to League One Blackpool, but they were undone. Clear by Blackpool and they'll try and come out here. Oh, on the, on the break. break. Looks to try and slide it in. Carey will go through and go and look to try and add a second, which he does. Blackpool in the cup tie. Gillingham go out as Sonny Carey seals the business on the counter attack. Gillingham nil, Blackpool two. Game set a match. And of course, uh, Maidstone from last year going to the fifth round of the competition. Probably the story of last season's FA Cup. They made the first round, of course, this year away at Solihull Moors. We knew it would be tough, unfortunately, unsuccessful for the Stones. Wilkinson, can he get a shot in? Wilkinson shoots. Lovely goal. 3-0 for Solihull. Ends it as a contest. Even more. Good play from uh, Adu Poku. Comes to Wilkinson. Takes a touch to control it. Second one, puts it in the corner. Maystone's dream with the FA Cup this year is over. No chance in the fifth round this time. Solihull three, Maystone United nil. What a big crowd at Longmead, 2,900 there. Biggest one since the 70s uh, for Tunbridge as they took on Harbour Town. And they were pre-match favourites as well, divisions above uh, their opposition. Unfortunately, uh, they didn't come out on top of this one. And he's gone past him now. This is O'Sullivan now going up. It's there. That's 4-0. Forbes has made it to 4-0 for Harbour Town.